Hey, man, we're back again. It's first smoke of the day, episode 59. It's your boy Pat God's in the building. I'm here with my co-host, Black Leaf. What up? Yeah, what you rolling up right now? Well, I got some OZK, but I'm about, I want to ride up, roll up that giant lemon. Some Terps and Caicos. We got my man, <laughs> Be Easy Buds, in the building. What's good, homie? How you doing? What up, everybody? It's Be Easy. Glad to be on here. Hell yeah. I like it, man. Bro, and the, come in and, you know, I've heard about the duck sauce. We're looking at the Terps and Caicos. What do we got? The, the this no, is the collab with me and No Booth. The yeah, um, giant man, lemon we did. The giant lemon. Um, and we're about to get into some of these flavors, but man, you got a hell of a story and people definitely reached out and was like, yo, you got to talk to this man. I'm really appreciative of everybody doing that. They have some of the best supporters too. You, you know, I asked sure them, I'm not going to lie. I said, Hey, let everybody message for smoke of the day. I want to get on here. <laughs> it's a personal goal of mine. And sure enough, I was told that they started messaging you guys constantly. You also had some key players talk very well of you and your brand and, yeah. uh, your whole thing and how, it, how it came together, which is, you know, relationships really get you in the doors at the end of the day. So that's, it's dope, man. And thank you for, you know, acknowledging us to, you know, come tell your story and link up and shit. Um, originally coming out of Boston, out of East Boston in particular, but yes, Boston. Talk Ooh. to us about, tell us the rundown, man. What, uh, we usually can start. What's your first time smoking weed? All right. So I'm a lot different than other people. I started late. I started out of I high like school. That. You know what I mean? So like growing up, I lived in this place called Brandywine. It was like a bunch of townhouses, you know what I mean? Not quite project, but townhouses. And um, like I was big anti-drug, anti-drug this. It was crazy. So I didn't smoke until out of high school. And then um, the first time I smoked, I was with a bunch of my friends, like high school friends, you know? I remember passing out in the bed. I woke up. They took my money out of my back pocket. They went to the store 24 across the street, came back with mad munchies. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was high and it just passed out. And after that, it was off and running. I'm not going to lie. I loved it from the first time I ever did it. Was there a specific strain that first time or was um, it just back then? It was Mexican brickweed. You know, yeah. pop it on the table, a million seeds come popping out. So it wasn't the good stuff by any means. You know what I mean? It's not like the stuff nowadays. Eventually it moved on to hydro and stuff and so on and so forth. But in the beginning, it was just that Mexican dirty brickweed. <clears throat> that I, think I think that's what most of us started on. If you're yeah. at a certain age bracket, it's like yeah. you started there for sure. Absolutely. You know, it's crazy to think sure. where the, the people today start. Yeah, they're lucky, you know what I mean? I wish I could have started off smoking Skittles and candy, yeah. you know? And but, to know where it's gone because, like, the Northeast is known for fire now. The like, there, is there's loaded pop, with fire Yeah, right I was about now. to say, it's not, Absolutely. you Absolutely. Know. You know, they grow good over there. I just had some stuff the other night from a grower in D.C., and the stuff was really good. You know, th there's definitely people doing the thing over there. <clears throat> when I was back there, we used to get stuff from Maine. You yep. know, there's people doing their thing over there in Maine. They're growing some good um, strains for sure over there. That, you know, what are some, what's some good stuff you see coming out of that way? Um, so Maine, like, at least when I was back there, they had more of the old school genetics down pack. You know, like if you wanted to get fired, you know, it's not necessarily my thing, but if you wanted to get fired GMO and stuff like that. Like they, Mac and shit. Yeah, like yeah, Mac, forget about it. At the time, you could get some <laughs> of the best Mac around. Yeah. That stuff, that, there was some great Mac that came yeah. out of there, actually. I can't lie about that. Yeah. But, you know, it's more of the older strains. Like, it wasn't the new stuff like Skittles and Runts and Gelatos and stuff like that. It was definitely more the old school strains. Piffs and Hazes. Chems. And stuff like that. Chems, for sure. Yep. They grow a good chem up there. Chem and Mac are probably the two best. And GMOs that come out of there. They have that, you know, pretty down packed, for sure. And, I mean, Boston's known for so much shit, bro. What a crazy town to come up in for weed. You know what I'm saying? Just wild, bro. Yeah, no, Boston's a vibe, you know. Boston's definitely a vibe. They smoke heavy out there. They love weed out there. You know, it just became legal, you know, within the last five years or whatever out there. So, you know, they have both sides of it, the rec market and the traditional side. So, you know, there's a lot of access to it. You can be out there. You can get any brand you want in Boston. It's like you can put just as easy as access as it is to, in L.A. going to Cookies or Backpack Boys or whatever, you know. Every brand is out there for probably less than what they sell them out here in the dispensary, Ooh. you know. So... Don't give them that game. You know, but yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it is wild, bro. You know? It's crazy. And so then from from starting smoking, mm -hmm. where does it go from there? Now that it starts to become a habit, are you starting to see plants? What, how old were you, too? About I was 18? just out of high school, so probably 18, 18, yeah. like 18, 19 in that range. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah, so, you know, I'm smoking, you're smoking or whatever. And that was, like I said, 18, 19. 
And then from there, I'm not going to lie, my life took kind of a crazy turn from there, you know. I kind of got into heavy drugs at 21, you know. So anti-drug and then got oh, into crazy. heavy I don't drugs. I how that happened, but it's, Weed's it's the gateway, crazy. Man. I'm talking like. It's a gateway drug. Don't say that. Don't, <laughs> don't say it. You're not a gateway don't drug. Don't say that. Dude. 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 Nah, nah. nah. You, you're <laughs> just <laughs> like, if they lied about this, what else did they lie about, Yeah, right? no, it's definitely not. Nobody smokes weed and say, hey, let's go try, <laughs> you know, perks tomorrow. But um, yeah, no, bro, it was crazy. I got into heavy drugs like Oxycontin. What do you think? Wrong, just wrong, around the wrong people. Um, pharmaceutical. I, I don't companies. know. Maybe what I was going through at the time. I think I broke up with a girl at the time that I was with for like four years or mm -hmm. whatever. So you know, being young and maybe thinking the wrong thing, or you know what I mean. Just you know, you don't think what it's going to turn into what it turns into. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then one day you're waking up like, oh shit, I feel like shit. What happened? And you can't stop. You know. So yeah, I mean. Like I said, it went from pills to heroin to everything. Like I had a crazy life at one point, you know, without let's, a doubt. Let's get into so, it, man. Like what's, yeah, what's 21, you know, you're 18, 19, smoke a weed. And then you said around 2021, 20, you, the heavy, heavier yeah, stuff came no, in. And I don't even I, remember the first time doing it, bro. Like I, like a lot of people could probably remember the first time when they tell that story. I, I don't remember the first time. Like I vaguely do. I think I was working and like, actually I'm starting to remember actually. I was working at a delivery job in, um, at the time, oxys were around, like the big ones, like 40s and 80s or whatever. So like, I think I took a 40 or, so, or 20 maybe the first time I swallowed it, you know? And then I was like, oh, I was high. I like that feeling, you know, warm and fuzzy or whatever. I was like, oh, this is cool. I like it. But again, you don't know what, behold, like, I didn't know about addiction at the time. Like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know about a drug just habit. High. I had no idea. I did, you know, I'm smoking weed. Like if I don't smoke weed the next day, I'm fine. So it's like, I didn't realize like what was going to become from it. And then, like I said, <clears throat> whatever, you take it however many days in a row. And after three days or whatever, you're kind of there. Like, you know, you don't feel good when it's, um, when you don't have it. And then I don't even think, you know, like, that's why you don't feel good. You know, I don't even remember. I think maybe I told somebody like, Hey, I don't feel good. And they were like, Hey, how many times, how many times did you take them? I think I was like three out of the last four. Like, yeah, bro, that's probably it. And then I was like, you sure? He's like, yeah. I think I took another one. I was like, yeah, I felt like magic again. And then it was just downhill from there, you know what I mean? Most of my 20s. And eventually, you know, I did petty shit. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't the person that was going to, like, go out and, um, like, rob a store or rob from somebody. Like, it wasn't me. I'm a good dude. Like, you know, it wasn't me. But, like, I stole from my family a lot, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, I did stuff that I wasn't proud with him. But, you know, it happens, you know? And eventually... I think I, um, what did I, do? I think I took money out of their ATM. I mean, like, I didn't, wasn't the first time, you know, and they got me, um, in Massachusetts, they call it Section 35. You know, I remember it being like a Sunday morning or whatever day, Monday morning, I woke up at like 8 a.m., two cops were in my bedroom. Damn. And, um, yeah. And I um, got put in cuffs. I was like, what's going on? I didn't do no crimes. Like, you know what I'm saying? They cuffed me. They took me right out of my bedroom, took me immediately to court, put me in the um, holding cell, said, go pee in a cup. Peed in the cup. Obviously, we know the results. I went in front of the judge, and the judge said, you're going to um, Bridgewater, which is a facility over there, to jail, basically, for 30 days. I was like, for what? I didn't even do anything wrong. And the, your parents section 35 you. I was like, I don't even know what that means. I guess if, like, a family member just goes to the court and section 35 you, you know what I'm saying? They have right to get you, um, whatever, psych avowed, and the court can then take it from there, and they did that, and then 30 days in there. And then once that started happening, and there I learned about heroin, you know? Oh, man. So yeah. it was actually a bad thing. Yeah. To this day, if you ask my parents, they'll tell you that's one of the biggest regrets in life, you know, because when I was you, in- um, it's, like, it's like leaving it up to the fucking state at that point, which is- Yeah, no, I don't agree with it at all. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. Well, you put him day. in a tougher position now. He was already in a tough position. Instead of reaching out to help, to do. It, it becomes a tougher situation, which then forces you into an even worse position. Yeah. You know, but like I said, they were doing the right thing at the time in their mind. That's cool. Like it, they didn't know, you know, right. Nobody knows it's going to happen, you know, so it is what it is. It happened, you know, but in there, like I said, you're, you're basically in like a, um, what do you call it? Like a dormitory of, you know, bunk beds. It's not like in a cell. So it's like a, a left aisle and a right aisle and you're in the um, double bunk beds, you know, everybody in there is an addict, you know, mm. literally you're there for that. You got section 35, you know, and, um, but, you know, people there, you know, just talk, you know, you're there all day. What else are you going to do? You're going to talk, you're playing whist or whatever, you're talking, playing cards. And they started saying, you know, everybody's asking their stories. And like, 
I don't say it to brag, I was like really into it, like heavy, like I was doing a lot of them, like a real lot of them of the 80s. And um, they're like, oh, you should just do dope, bro, it's cheaper. It's way cheaper. And like at that time in my mind, there was no shot I was getting clean when I was in there. I knew the day I got out, I was getting high. I just was not ready. Like I was not ready. I mean, and whatever, you know, I just got out, got high, you know, but in there I learned about oxys. I mean, excuse me, about heroin. And then they told me it's the same thing. It's cheaper, the same high. You get the itch, you get everything. It's the same exact high. I was like, yeah, but it's heroin, bro. You know, that's one thing you hear about. Like it's dirty, you know, the name sounds dirty, you know, oxys is a pill, you know, it's like not a dirty thing. So um, I think I got out of there that day, definitely got high on oxys. And I think after like two days, eventually I made the call to somebody. And I was like, yo, you, you have it or whatever. And one thing led to another. And from there, forget about it. Like my life just went down the, the um, drain even faster. Was because it just you, like oxys in your opinion? Um, yeah, but so, okay. So I, I'm trying to remember, honest to God, I think like, like I'm a full throttle guy. Like I have a very addictive personality with anything that is like, I, I go maxed out. You know what I mean? I think the first time I did it, like not to get too graphic, I sniffed it the first time after that, it was never sniffed again. Like it was sh every time with the needles. Like if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. Not so no even stupid. smoking it. Yeah, no, I'm going to just do it right. We're not going to do it this way. I'm going to just do it the way it's supposed to be done. And like, once that happened, it's not like oxys. Like, was that because the people around you were like, just do it like this? Or were you just ventured off on your own and was no, like, I definitely try to called somebody like a, a friend yeah, in like yeah, yeah, yeah. the town houses that we lived in, his older brother was doing it. I, I think he might've been doing it at the time. I don't remember if he was doing it, whatever, but I called him and we did it together or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. I don't remember that exact deal, but I feel like that was the case. And um, yeah, cause like I said, I don't know what to do. You know what I mean? I've never seen it or done it. And then, you know, whatever we did it. And after that, just like, you know, you're not going to get that feeling pretty in many places. And it's just, you can't get away from it. And now you're really chasing it. At now that you're, point, forget you're about You're chasing it. it because it's what, it's like probably, it, it lasts half as long and it's cheaper, but it's dirtier and it's, you know what I'm saying? So many other it's things. It's not even probably, about chasing it. It's really? like, I'm talking like you go to bed, you wake up, like the moment your eyes are open, mm -hmm. like literally the moment your eyes are open, that's all that's on your mind. Like there's nothing you can do about it. It's like, it's the physical is whatever, you know, you get the flu, everybody gets the flu. You could deal with five days of being sickness, but the mental, you cannot deal with the mental. Your brain is the strongest thing in the, in the world. You know what I'm saying? Your brain has mind control over you. You cannot stop your mind from constantly thinking about it. Like if you have the flu and this is a magic pill, and if you swallow this magic pill, it's gone instantly. And this pill is in front of you for seven days while you're sick. Can you, you can go one day. Shit, you might even be able to go two days. But can you go three, four, five, six, seven till it's over? Man, you got to be a strong person to Which do that. Which is like 60 to 90 days realistically. Not oh, yeah, 30. that's just the physical. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, forget yeah. about it after that. You know what I'm saying? But the straight physical, you know? So like you always know in the back of your mind, the fix is there. Like I can be sick, but I don't have to be if I don't want to be tough bro that's that's rough. you know what i mean and, and that's the hottest part of it without a doubt she how many years does that go then how many years of of you know so what let's say i mean i've been clean i have it tattooed on me august 1st 2007 oh, so almost yeah. 15 years Congrats, coming up bro. you know Congrats. less than a, a little bit over a month of 15 years clean what so, was the uh you know I, I like to go back into that and it's like during that time period and now you know, using it that way, what was the big difference? Like, what was the big the final breakthrough? The catalyst well, to well, turn no, them what off? Was, what was like when, when it, I feel like from smoking something to maybe sniffing something yeah. and then the final stage is shooting something, yes. right? And it's like, what Correct. was it when you started that? Like, what was the big difference from um, like sniffing it or some shit? Like the, the high difference? Yeah. Mean? or like No, it's different. It's like... It's, yeah, what's the... I, 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 you, I, and I think this... I think it's important for people to understand this because I, a big role that plays into this, because I had a friend that mm -hmm. same, similar, very similar story. Mm -hmm. And I asked him one day uh, when he was sober, I was like, yo, what, like what happened? Yeah. And he literally, I'll never forget this. He gave me a one word response and he said, curiosity. Nah, it wasn't curiosity with me. I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was. Like, I don't, I, I really don't know. That's a great question. Like I told you, like, I'm just going to do like, everybody told me like, this is how it's supposed to be done. Like the feeling you're going to get is different. Like the feeling you get is different and it's very fucking different, you know, mm -hmm. if I'm going to be honest. So 
I think that's what he was curious about. Yeah, like, but if you wouldn't have people around you no, to I guide think, you, do you no, think I, you would right. have pressed through yourself? Because that's why I said yeah, you went 100%. from you went from like trying it one time, sniffing it to straight shooting, which is crazy. Because like you hear about people smoking it for years, yeah, and no. all, where like you almost have to have someone around you be like, hold on, hold on, that ain't the way to do it. Right. And then you're like, well, I wait, think he you came know? out of the program, and everybody yeah. already yeah, gave I think him like, the rundown. That's scary for parents. Like it's almost like keep a shield around from other people, you know, using. That's almost like the last. <laughs> terrifying i just had a son yeah. my son's about to be two months old like that's one of my biggest fears like oh. you know you're growing up in la la's not a tough easy place to grow up you got to worry about addiction gangs it's just violent everywhere the whole mm. country's different now you know what i'm saying so it's like you know that that's a fear always i mean drugs is a major thing you know what i'm saying without a doubt you have to worry about that always it's everywhere and it can happen to everybody like i have my mom and dad are the best people on earth. They've been married. I'm 40 years old. They've been married, what, 42 years? They were in my life every single day of my life. And my dad worked his ass off at the post office, went after there, went to um, a restaurant, and managed it or delivered. My mom's been a waitress her whole life. Like, they work hard jobs, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're nine to five That's people. That's not easy work. My dad doesn't drink. My dad don't do drugs. He don't smoke cigarettes. My mother doesn't drink. She doesn't do drugs. She doesn't smoke cigarettes, you know? And then, boom. Why? You know what I mean? There's no rhyme or reason. It, I was the only one out of my friends. None of my friends did it. Like my, my immediate circle, none of them did it. My high school friends, none of them did it. None of I was the only one. I think maybe one other kid, excuse me, one other person had a pill, uh, oxy problem. That's it. None of them, I was doing it way before them. You know what I mean? We we come from Florida, and yeah. if you remember, recall during those times, Florida was like the epicenter. Oh, the absolutely. Pill Florida was the pills. What Cali is the weed. Yeah, yep. yeah. I had all the pharmacists. And Literally. old people. And I mean, there would be vans scripts. of people coming mm -hmm. and doctor shopping. Yeah. And just yes. going, making tours. And it's like people from Kentucky and, and then you think know, about Massachusetts, all these areas, right? But so I say that to say this is that I had a lot of friends yep. that got, you know, definitely into the pills. You know, it starts with the lower tabs and shit and then our Percocets and yep. it, you know, levels up. But um, how many years was that until you, you had your breakthrough? And so, what was the catalyst? All right. So, like, I was, like, you know, I, like I said, I wasn't a guy going to rob stores, rob mm -hmm. banks. Like, that's not me. I, I'm, like, I was a pussy. I wasn't going to do that stuff. You're a good you know? person at heart. And you have yeah, certain no, I have morals. A good heart, that's right? not, I was yeah, raised yeah. by two parents who taught me right from wrong, who do right from wrong. And in my neighborhood, if you ask about my dad and my mom, like, nobody's going to say a bad word mm -hmm. about them. I'm going to speak of gold of them. And that's how I was raised. But, you know, I, the catalyst, like, so... I wanted to stop, like, you know, I always wanted to stop. I didn't know how to do it. Like I would go to detox constantly. Like I probably went, you know, when I say detox, I mean those washout detoxes, those five day detoxes, not, not, they don't really have many programs like out here, like the 30, 60 day program back. You want to go 30 days, you got to get sections like I did. You know what I'm saying? Or have big money, which, you know, I don't have that. My parents are regular people working regular jobs. Which 30 days and 60 days ain't going to do it. All the homies I know who passed, you need mm -hmm. 120, yep. you need six months, bro. Yeah. You need six months of living a living. regular life yeah, and it's to not even to be get. like, what was that like? Yeah. Because all you remember is that, I you bet. You don't remember. You remember. I had homies. I have hella homies from back home that are not around anymore yeah. because of stuff like that. You know, see, I, I can say luckily, like where I'm from, East Boston, the town got decimated by drugs. Mm -hmm. A lot of people made it out, though. Like most of the people that I used to get high with or my age and got high, most of them, God bless, are still around and have wow. families and are healthy and are doing amazing in life. There's a, you know what I mean? So, you know, obviously there's a few that didn't make it, but like the, my, the people that I knew personally, like a lot of them, luckily, God bless, made it out. And most of them, if not all, are doing extremely well in life now. So, you know, that's good. But so, yeah, I would go to detoxes all the time trying to get out, but like... I couldn't, like, I don't know, like, I would just leave after a day or two, like, I just check out, like, I'm going home, like, I don't want to be here anymore, like, but part of me wanted to do it, but once I'm there, I don't want to stop, like, I don't want to be there, like, I, I was like, okay, I want to stop, so I got to go there, but once I'm there, I don't want to, I don't want to be here anymore, so I'm gonna go home, the food sucks, the bed's a twin size bed, I'm gonna just go home, so it was like a battle within a battle, you know, but eventually, you know, the breakthrough happened, like, I had several breakthroughs, six months, nine months, but like, I don't think I ever had more than nine months. Like I remember, um, I never wanted to go on methadone. So they had the thing called Suboxone. And um, this is when it first, first, first came out in Massachusetts. And um, you know, the waiting list was so, so long, but I got, I found a doctor out like an hour and a half away. And I, my mom, we're gonna go the next morning, drove me out there. I met the doctor, he got the Suboxones and they worked great, great. It took him every day as was, nine months. 
Then after nine months, it just, I don't know, I, I relapsed again, you know, just like a lot of addicts do. So did you try to get off the Suboxone or, and then they relapsed or what? Um, I, I, I don't think so. I think it just was like, okay, I want to get high type of vibe. You know, I, again, the person I got high with lived in the area I live. We're talking like, if this is my row, his row is there. So it's like, we see each other every day, you know? Ooh. And I'm sure just one thing led to another or whatever the case may be. They tell you though, like I, I've had homies who's literally say like, like you can't be around anybody that still does shit. At all. Yeah. At bro. all. Get far away. So you know, I'm trying to get to the detox, you know, the section 35 never going to work. Those detoxes, I want, I, my, my mind state was quit, quit. And then wherever the time I went to detox and like, okay, so back to this box, it's a box in nine months, clean relapse. That happened a few times. Like, you know, go back on it month relapse, you know, whatever. And then I remember going to a detox and like, I remember talking to my dad or whoever on the phone saying, look, I really want to do it. I was against methadone, did not want to go on methadone. One day I said, fuck it. Like, if that's what it takes and I got to get clean, we're going on methadone. I think, I, you know, whoever I was talking to, my mom or dad, I made a promise that I would go on it. Um, I got to the waiting list uh, at wherever I was going, this place in Jamaica Plain, which is a part of Boston, and um, went there, got my dose, and, you know, in the beginning, the same thing, like, you know, the first year on it, you know, some days I'm clean, some days I'm high. I'm not high every day. But some days I'm clean because if you, you have to go every day, if you don't go every day to get your dose, they'll kick you off. And once you're on it, at a certain point, you build up a blocker. You know what I'm saying? And you, it won't break through. And eventually I got my act together. I would go every day and it, it, it worked, you know, but like my biggest fear of going to methadone was because in the neighborhood, you'll see people who are on it and clean, but they're on such a high dose. We have train stations in East Boston and this train station called Maverick. So like you go down Maverick, you'll see all the addicts just sitting there on methadone who are allegedly clean, but they're nodding off with their head in their lap. Like, bro, you're an addict still. You just switched from heroin or pills to get higher methadone. What's the diff? You know what I mean? I never wanted to be that. So I think they started me at 30 milligrams, which is the base. And um, I think I went as high as 40. And I never went higher than 40 milligrams. And I was on there for years, five years. You know what I'm saying? Five wow. years. Every day going every day. It up. Eventually you get take homes. You start at one day, two days a week, and then you got to go once a week, just the day to pick it up. So I, you know, I get to that, you know what I mean? Eventually I get to that point and I got the, um, you know, I got the take home. So, you know, I'm doing really good at that point. And I told him like, yo, I want to get off of this. So what I did was like, I would start doing it like I went from 40 to 37 and a half to 35 to 32 and a half. I did it myself till I got to a certain point. And I, this was over months, you know what I'm saying? Like I think I probably did it the whole time over a year maybe to get down properly because I, I wanted to go slow. I wanted to make sure when I got off it, I was not withdrawing and I was clean. Because at this point, I'm living a clean life. Like we have a gym back home in East Boston called the, or at the time, the Orion Heights Gym. Now it's called the Marty Pino Center. And I was playing basketball every day. So I was healthy. You know, I was living a good life. I was going to the gym. And um, so I knew I could do it. Like I knew I had a whole new crew around me, like a whole new group of people. And um. Yeah, so my life is good, so I'm confident to get off it. And let me just butt in. Are you smoking weed at all through this 100%, period? hundred percent. That's why I'm so passionate about weed. <laughs> like, weed I got me it. off of okay. it. Like, weed, yeah. like a full-blown smoking weed every day. And weed is a huge part of it. Without weed, like, it's not possible. When we get to the next part of my life, weed helped that, in that stage even more. But oh, wow. back to this page, so, you know... I get off the methadone, like I said, to the point where I feel good, like I know I can do it. So I'm probably at 20 milligrams at this point. And I'm like, and I know I can deal with the uncomfortableness at this point. If I got a belly ache in my legs, I can deal with it. Like I'm good. So I was like, well, let's go right to 15. So I cut it from 20 to 15, which is a 25% increase. And like, as you get lower, the percentages that you're cutting out of your dose get bigger. You know what I'm saying? But I, I feel good. So then I was like, we go to 12 and a half, 10 after a month, seven and a half, two weeks, five. And I just stopped going. I was good. Like I said, I'm good. I told him, I was like, I feel good about it. I'm going to stop right here. And that was it. I never went back to anything. Like, you know, I was clean. Like was I said, that, for was years that in 2007? That Say it again. Was that in 2000? No, that before. was probably. So this is August, 2007. Yes. Yes. Okay. It was, it was the very, very beginning. Like I would say February because in March, my, um, my best friend got killed. You know, they robbed him and they killed him. My, my best friend, Ronnie. So he yeah. got killed and I'm um, like, you know, basically a robbery gone bad or whatever. And like when I went to the funeral, it fucked me up bad. And that's when I relapsed again. So that was in like March, what he got killed March in March early. And then, so I probably relapsed in May 
Like I think it was May. So it was a real quick run, but I, I had been clean for a while at this point. So I knew that not what I wanted at all. Like I knew what the fuck was going on. And I was like, Bobby, you can't do that. You can't go back to that fucking life. You, you don't want that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I buckled down. Like I probably told my parents right away type of vibe. And, um, I, I don't, re I don't remember necessarily how I got clean from that point. I would assume, I can't remember the, I would assume I got back on methadone. That would just seem like what I would have done. Mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly the details of it, but that's just sounds like I would have done. And, um, like I said, a very short run. And then August 1st came or whatever the day, you know, I don't remember the exact date, but the reason why I have August 1st tattooed on me, because the last test that I peed clean was, um, July. No, the last test that I peed dirty was July like 25th. So I figured a week later was the first. So that's why I just picked that date, you know, yep. because that was the last dirty test I had. And they tested me on the, like the, the first and I was clean. So I said, okay, cool. This will be the date, mm -hmm. you know, but. It makes it real now too, that it's tatted on there. Oh, hundred percent. No, right. If you, if it's a fictitious date in your head, oh, it's yeah. easy to say, well, fuck that date. But now it's on your arm. Yep. Now that's the date. No, 100%. That's awesome. You could put a bag right here right now. I don't give a fuck. I wouldn't look at it twice. Yeah, but fuck less. all that. But, no, but I'm dope. saying I'm a different person. Yeah. Nothing could make me go back to that. You know, there Good. was a time you couldn't do that. I would have caved in immediately. But <laughs> those days are long gone. God bless. You know, luckily those days are long gone. And I'm in a much better position in life. You know what I mean? Thank God, you know, because obviously when you're like that, you can't do anything. You're just a prisoner. You're not a real person. You know, no addict wants to be an addict. I promise you that. Like they wake up every day wishing they were clean. But you know, whatever the reason being that you're that mental hold, man, it's a bitch. It, it really is. I think it happens to the people too. A lot of times that have a lot going on up here. Absolutely. Some of the smartest people I've known in life were the first ones to fuck, like have issues with that. Right. Like I know some of the smartest guys in my crew mm -hmm. were like that guy. Yeah. It was always that. And in Florida where we knew, uh, people drop dead faster because there were so many pills going on that yeah. like where some of your homies made it, like none of our homies made it. Yeah. Like we know a ton of that guys sucks. that never, you know, that sucks. I'll tell you a quick story though. Crazy. Just about it. So we're in, uh, we got, I got busted for stems and the girl was nodding off in drug class. And the guy actually flipped out the drug. The, and yeah. I'm in drug class for stems of weed. <laughs> for stems of weed. I swear Imagine to God. And so we're in class and, and he flipped out every week. He would throw her out of class and then she would just test for methadone. Mm -hmm. And she's like, yeah, I'm on it. Yeah, that's exactly. Too and high, and too she would come back in class next week and then she would nod out and then he would flip out, throw his papers and shit and then throw her out of class. And that would happen every single week. Unbelievable. But that's where I, I'm like, wow, this is, but you know, it's, it's like the same thing. She's trying to figure it out, but it, it's hard, man. You know, like I said, I went to detox so many times, like wanting to get clean, like with the mindset mm -hmm. at one point, like at some point it was just to get away from my parents. Cause I might've stole something. It's like, I need a break from the heat. Like they throw you, you know, my mom throw me out, but my mom loves me. You know what I'm saying? Like she throw me out. She don't want to throw me out. You know what I mean? So it's like, I'm just going to go back or whatever. But you know what I mean? But yeah, it's hard. It really is hard. But once I did it, luckily, God blessed by, you know, getting eventually the right people behind around me. Everything was a go from there. Well, so what do you think the breakthrough was in 2007? Um, like I said, I, I just, just like I said, I, my parents, like, it's done. Like, I don't want to break their heart. Like, you know, it, I, they, I wanted to get clean for them. Like, I, I, like I said, like, I took a lot of money from them over time. Like, a hundred hair. I did some bad things, you know what I'm saying? And, like, yeah, like, I wanted to do that. They deserve better. They're good people. They work regular jobs. You know what I'm saying? They don't, they, they didn't deserve that. They didn't raise me that way. Like, I went to private school. You know what I'm saying? I went, well, I went to public school to the fourth grade. And then I went to, like, or third grade or fourth grade, whatever. And I went to, like ninth grade in public in by private school excuse me so from like fourth to ninth grade private school, i went back to public school but like they raised me right like you know what i'm saying and it wasn't um it wasn't who they were and they they deserve better like to see their son who they love doing that you know what i mean they deserve to see me living a good life so you were at a breaking point it sounds like like you were at a like oh, yeah. this is it i'm at my moral boundary and it it has to stop here no, like some, i'm done at some point like when you're trying to get clean like yeah, like you want to, like at some point you might even want to harm yourself because you can't get clean. Like you're like, fuck, I can't do it. Like, like I know the old me's in there somewhere. You feel me? But how the fuck do I get them back? And mm -hmm. it's like, you know how, but you can't do it. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? For one reason or another, you just, it's your brain. Like, just do it. Just do it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, bro, 
Let me tell you, 24 hours can feel fucking long when you're withdrawing. Like, it could feel like 124 hours. It's not easy. Like, there are parts of the day, like, back then, like, when you're really withdrawing, you're looking at your clock by the minute, like, fuck, bro. That was one minute. Like, how am I going to do this? Like, how do I do this? It's 11 a.m. How, how do I sleep tonight? How do I not throw up? How do I not get, how do I get off the goddamn toilet? How do I eat? How do you do any of that? And, man, it's an it's a ugly, ugly life. And, but it can happen to anybody. And that's where I feel like people go. don't understand. It could happen to anybody. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Without a doubt. Good guy, bad guy, woman, girl, making $5 million a year, making $5 a year. It can happen to all of you. I think what you just said, though, people, you skipped it quick and people need to hear it. You're like, holy shit, it's only 11 a.m. You had already lived yeah. a whole day by 11 a.m. and Those already had and I had already damn near given up yeah. and been like, you got to be kidding me. It's 11 a.m. I'm probably I got up dope sick at 7 a.m. that day. Slept probably three hours, tossing and turning, sweating. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you're in hell. It's like the, everything about being an addict is in hell. Like. It, it brings a character out of you that's not there. Like, you know, I would never do the stuff I did to people back then, ever. I think that some of the stuff I did, bro, I couldn't believe it, robbing people. Like, I never did that. It's not me. Like, you know, but I did it. Now yeah. you ask anybody that knows me, they'll trust me with a million dollars cash. It doesn't matter because, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I'm not that person. But, mm -hmm. but you know what else? Everybody I know today didn't know me back then. My best friend right there, my business partner, he didn't know me back then. Never seen a day of that, you know? You got to get a new crew around you, like we said earlier, new surroundings, get out of that shit. And you just got to build with better people that, you know, are on better timing, mm -hmm. you know? And that's really what it comes down to. Nobody knows me from back then, you know? And that, except, my, except for my close friends at the time, like who were already doing good, like, yeah. you know what I mean? And they'd think you're a different person. Yeah, I tell are. people my story, they're like, what? Yes. Like you? And I'm like, yeah. It can't be, I don't drink now. I mean, I might have a glass of wine if I go to dinner. I'm not like that person. Like, you feel me? Like, I, I never went to AA. I hated it. I don't believe in AA. I think it's a bunch of people going in there comparing stories. And, like, I always felt like about NA and AA, I felt like this. It was like, I can't be around people talking about it every day. I have to get the fuck away from this lifestyle. On. I can't hear, I don't care if you've been clean for 20 years and you're genuinely there to help people. You know, I can't hear you say, I'm fucking, so I'm Jimmy from so-and-so. Hi, um, I've been clean for 20 years. This is what I do, bro. Go on with your life. Or what they used to or miss, like, like they used to miss the feeling and they start talking about the feeling. Yeah, then feeling. they start talking about like, You know what I'm that. saying? And you're reminiscing. Yeah, and it's it turned like, into nah, a reminiscent nah. story. That's and it's crazy. Like, how can I get clean if I'm sitting in front of this for two hours a day? I need this out of my life, out of my eyes, out of my ears. I need to get around people that it didn't exist around from the beginning, you, you know? And, you know, that led to relapses in a few times, NA or AA, because, you know, everybody tells you, oh, you got to go to AA, you got to go to NA, that's what's going to help you get clean. Look, it worked for a lot of people. I, I don't knock those people, J just like weed, it's opinion-based, you know, what worked for you, God bless you. Me, personally, I got more harm from it than good, you know what I'm saying? And I never liked it for that reason, and for me, personally, the best thing to do is to get away from AA or NA and just... Like I said, find a new circle of friends or whatever to hang out with on a daily basis. And eventually I did that and it worked. And what a page turn. How did you end up maneuvering that? Did you like move away or something? No. Or? I lived in East Boston pretty much my whole life. And um, eventually we moved outside of East Boston, but like 15 minutes to a different like suburb, you would say like this, you know, and, and my parents still live there. You know, I basically lived in three addresses my whole life before LA and they were long term, you know and outside of East Boston for like three years. So I, I, like, so like I said, so back to when I was getting clean, I was playing basketball and stuff. So like basketball was always my favorite sport growing up. I was always good at it. I could always shoot or whatever. I was always good at it. So that was like my passion growing up. So I was like, I probably my mom probably said, hey, why don't you go back to the Heights gym and, and play again? You know, why don't you do something you used to like? You know, I'm just assuming that's how it played out. So I probably went one day. I remember being alone a lot of times, you know, because so on, I got, on methadone, I, you get overweight. Like you can't, you know, you, you get big. Like I was probably 270 pounds at the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can show wow. you a picture, like 270. Like, but I- Holy shit. Yeah, but at this point, like 
I'm, I'm in the gym, I'm working out. Like I remember going to the gym, I was doing the cross trainer every day. You know, I may or may not have done juice at the time to get <laughs> some more muscle, you know, whatever. But you know, I was taking the health serious. So I got back into the basketball playing. So there I met all the new people. Like, you know, that's how I met everybody. And to those people today, I, you know, I'm still cool with them, but that the Heights gym, I mean, this is probably the first time I ever realized that to be honest with you talking about it, played a huge role in my getting clean. I guess I'd never even noticed that to right now. But the Heights uh-huh. gym and all the people from there, they had a huge role in it, without a doubt. Positive circle of people focused yeah. on something positive. You know, just like I said, playing basketball, being healthy, being physical, laughing. Because, you know, when you're getting high, you're not laughing. Not in fucking fun about it. There's no jokes. You know what I'm saying? Half the time, you're probably asleep. Yeah, literally, you know, or just, yeah, just like watching TV, doing nothing at the end of the day, literally well, doing nothing. Well, the craziest nothing. thing is like, the people think they're sitting there watching TV. They're not at off the whole time. Know. No, I've been around yeah. people, you know, yeah. using it and it's like they wake up and they look at you and I had a specific instance with a, a person I knew and uh, they wake up and they look at you and they're like, what? And you're like, dude, you've just been nodding off for like 20 minutes. 20 you minutes. Like, I, like I didn't they're like, huh? No, nah. what? Like, and it's just like, you don't even realize it. Like, you're it's, like, it's really whoa, sad, bro. Like you're, do you dead ass don't. And it's true. You realize you're like, man, they, they think they really believe they themselves. Think it's a split yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, they, 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 they don't even like, believe oh, themselves. I off for a second. They don't even I'm just know. tired. They literally like, don't no, know. You were, you were yeah. out. Dude, yeah, no, it's crazy. For 20 bro. minutes. That's why we always hear people say, it's like I didn't even know that person or like they're such a different person. It's like, yeah, because it changes you. No, it's not you. It's like it changes you. Like, like I said, the stuff I would never do that. Like I'm an honest, trustworthy guy. And like I said, I stole, I did stuff like that. And like I would never do. I can't, you know, but that drug will make you do anything and everything to get it. It, it's, it's you just can't not do it. It's like you can't help it. There's Big no blame. way around it. I'm sure there's a lot of people watching this right now that you're going to inspire yeah. and give hope to. Oh, that, yeah. Like I said, that's what I want to still going. I don't think the statistics are very uh, big for recovering uh, heroin not easy, addicts. Man. Like, th- or even that pills. was the hottest battle. I mean, correction, the next stage might be the hottest battle, but that was one of the hottest battles of my life. So 2007 moving forward, where, where are you at? What are you doing? How's life looking? 2007 moving forward. So like I probably... At 2007, moving forward, I'm probably just, like I said, hanging around with the guys, getting clean. Like the, the basketball thing was a big thing. Like then we would go to my, to my, um, we used to hang in this house in Winthrop, shout out Big Tone. And then, um, you know, we'd, um, we'd smoke in his basement. We'd, um, you know, we'd get high down there. We'd smoke all the weed. We'd go over there, you know, it was vibes, you know, but like I was, cause like I was never that guy. Like, you know, people, like I said, a few, like, minutes ago like i'm not the guy i'll drink wine at dinner i just don't like alcohol i'm not the guy say oh if i drink wine i'm gonna relapse like i was never the fear if i go smoke this blunt i'm gonna shoot dope like that was never a concern like there was, it had nothing to do with it you know and, and so we would always go over there we'd get high you know and, and that was the vibe like just that so just be, you know, that was the initial stage then then i think i was probably delivering pizzas at one point like that was always the job i had at that point, pizza. is it fire or is it still Mexican brickweed? Oh, no, no. We're in 2007, eight now. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, at that point, oh, so I remember this like it was yesterday. So I'm delivering. I said, I always had delivery jobs. Even when back in the Mexican brickways in the hydro days, like my dad <laughs> worked at a pizza shop. He managed it. And I'm a big one in East Boston called Kelly's Pub. And I would, yeah, I'm selling the hydro, you know? And I was always a good businessman. Like, you know, I knew how to reach the people. And so that's when that happened, like the, that. But back in 2008, I got another job delivering pizzas because I always like that job. It gives you freedom. Like I, I'm not in a place all day. I don't have a boss watching me. I'm in my car. I'm driving. I'm listening to my music. I'm on my time. You know what I'm saying? That was my like my second job. The best job 16. for a trapper yeah, I love too. It. It's the best job I for a trapper. It. Make tips. You're, yeah. You know. Everybody's smoking weed too. You'd be surprised when oh, they do a sure. open and you smell weed. Yeah. And think about if you're not delivering pizzas, let's just replace it for what the next stage of delivering pizzas is. Now you're just delivering bags of weed. Yeah. 100%. For most pizza guys, that's the next stage. Yeah. Step. It's a beautiful <laughs> combination. Yeah. It's a combination you know that's meant to be. Pizza. Yeah. So I remember calling my homie back home and um, I was like, yo, I think I want to start, you know, trapping again and um he's like oh, what you what you thinking i was like i don't know i don't want to sell shit bro because i don't like smoking trash you know what i'm saying i need some fire and uh he's like all right cool let me see let me see what i can do because i've been out of it for a little bit you feel me mm-hmm. and um so he's like oh yo 
I just made a call. He got this fire sour. And the sour, bro, was fucking high. It was expensive at the time. It was like significantly more than anything else that we were being on offer. Maybe like a rack, 1500 more. And I was like, fuck it, buy that. That's what I want to smoke. I'm talking, we got taxed in an obnoxious price. It might even been more than that. He charged us by the ounce and it was obnoxious. And um, I remember he came with that pound of sour. He opened the fucking thing. And I was like, what? It was, wow. Just like the best smell you'd ever smell. It was just flawless, flawless weed. And um, yeah, fuck it. We've grabbed it up in grams, AKA 0.9s to make it stretch. And um. So I think we sold him at like 30 a gram, maybe 35 a gram. And that was it. Like I remember delivering pizzas. I remember, I'll never forget when I got my first good customer, he opened the door and I smelled the weed just reeking. He was clearly high. Like you can see it. I said, Hey bro, take this. And, um, called me the next day. He's like, yo, I sell it by the gram. He's like, how much for an eighth? I was like, I don't do that. He's like, well, just how much for four? And I was like, I charged him whatever price, a little discount. And he called me every day after that with four and eight. I was like, wow, I finally got a good customer. And it, it um, just built up from there. He would order a pizza and I would just fly there with the bud. It was easy, easy lemon squeezy. You know what I'm saying? It was so easy. And then, yeah, it, it, like it always went hand in hand. It was just easy to do. And it was fire pizza, pizza too. and weed. Fucking fire pizza. Bro, think about that. <laughs> Your delivery guy does like top the shelf pizza restaurant in the area. And you can get four grams. Just high. Like, I mean, this is, that's a move right here. Like going back further, it's like, look, they, I hope my dad don't get mad at saying this, but going back further, like when I worked at the restaurant in East Boston, like, like they had this thing called seven coupons. You get seven coupons, you get a free pizza. Well, gee. What do you think I did? Took a bunch of boxes of them. I'm telling you, I'm giving seven coupons with a 20 bag. How fast before that word spread in East Boston? That was, the, that was one of the best marketing deals to this day I ever made. You, get, you call me for a 20, I will give you seven coupons so you can order a pizza immediately. They fucking loved it. It spread like wildfire. I was always good at marketing. I always, I just always had little gimmicks that I knew that's, people would that's like. That's a pretty good incentive. Bro, and that's a good yeah, play pizza for, for your free. dad. You're going to get the though. munchies and fire sour. But that Easy even decision. works for the other. That works for the pizza place too, because now guaranteed if those people like the pizza, they're going to order at yeah, least one to everything. two more times. But even like, uh, you know, it, that's I a I would move. be delivered to the schoolyard. You know, I need a 20 day. <laughs> I would get the on delivery location, schoolyard. <laughs> I was like, oh, I know who that is. Seven coupons. So many fucking pizzas went out with 20 bags back then. It was unbelievable. That's but, awesome. <laughs> like, always, Shout out to Pops, man. Yeah. 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 Shout out to Pops. But Hell yeah. yeah, like I always had the good gimmicks, like, you know, and yeah, it, it worked. It really, that one was a good one. That one got a good one. Other people were like, bro, who is this kid? He's got the fucking, he's giving out pizzas with, with pudding bags. <laughs> was sour. Yeah, it, it was crazy. It really was. That was a good one. Yeah. And so what are some of the other strains you're seeing at the time come through? Any other strains that were real memorable at the time besides the sour? Yes, yeah, very much so. I, I got to be really honest. I've been blessed in life. I don't know like that. Like, I don't try to sound cliche. Like if I, I talk a lot on my Instagram, you know, and like, I always say like, this is my, I like to speak things into an existence. I'm the biggest believer in the, like my partner will test this. I've never not said anything that didn't come true. I told him this would happen a month ago and it happened. You know what I'm saying? I, anything I say, cause I just believe it. Uh, what other crazy ass strains that sour? Oh yeah, the crazy ass strain at the time. So I've always been blessed price. with plugs. Always mm -hmm. been blessed with plugs. I've always had the best plugs. I don't know how. So now this is going back even further. So at high school, in senior year in high school, they would let you leave early if you had enough credits. You know what I'm saying? So I would get out at like I want to say it was like 11:40 was the earliest you can get out. I got out 11:40. You're in at like 7:20 at the time, I think. So 7:20, 11:40, and I would go work at the sub shop in Beachmont. They're still there to this day, over 20 years later, called Domino's. And I had this this kid work down there, a bunch of stoners, just a stoner little sub shop, all stoners working, cooking. Everybody's a stoner. There's one dude behind the counter. Like I was a new guy, so you know, they're not gonna approach me at first. And then after a while, he kind of saw what I was doing. And he was like, bro, I get the best stuff around. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, I get the stuff they called the headies. He called the headies back then. I get headies. I was like, what is that? He's, it would be at the time, like anything you saw in high times, you would get Big Bud, um, cotton candy. Like the first time I ever heard name stuff. And it was mind blowing. And I would get the, the hydro from him. That was what I would get to sell. But I'd get the head stash from him to smoke. And he always would come in like, maybe an eighth or a seven, no more than a half, you know? 
And every time I went, he had something that was just mind blowing that you would just see on TV. It was like, and I, but I always had somebody that was just getting the best of the best in the area. I don't know how it's happened. Even out here, it happened pretty quickly. I don't know how it's like, it was just meant to be, but man, he was getting the best weed ever. Nobody had seen it around. Everybody was just smoking hydro, 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 but he, whoever his connect was at the time, he had it. And it's just the best of the best. It really was. From a young, like I remember he had the G13. Damn. That, that, uh, the red strain. I forget what it was called, but it was just trippy. He had from Florida. And that trippy stuff was some of the best. I missed the whole schedule of work one night from that stuff. Super green, orange hairs. Yeah. yeah. Sticky. The best. Crazy. I remember trippy. I smoked like three o'clock in the afternoon. I had to be in work at five. I never made it. The stuff paralyzed I have me. a similar story. <laughs> but, yeah. There's a whole generation of people right now growing up that have no clue what that weed was like. 10, 15 years ago when we had the original blueberries, the real yes, blueberries. Oh my God, that's one of the best the ever The skunks, had. the crippy, and now you're going to see piff come back around like the, the yes. hazes because those people cherish those, but sour. You're starting to see a little trickle out, but it's a little different than what we used to come up. But it's just like, I feel bad for some of these younger generations that um, haven't seen some of this stuff because it is so wild compared to some of the stuff we have. Like, it's just very different, a different it world. Is. See, I have opinions on that too. It's like, so, see, I'm, I have real opinions on the sour and the haze thing right now, especially as being an East Coaster. Um, I think people are chasing the memory, if you want to know the truth. I think people are chasing think, the memory. You don't do think, you think it's people good. remember it better than it actually was? It's like your first time with anything. Never happened. It is, again. It, yeah. Like I remember my pops telling me, he, he was like, "One thing I'll tell you about drugs is that," and he's a, a recovering yeah. addict, where it was sober many years. Yeah. But he was like, "It'll never be like your first time. You can't be. So don't even try." Think it, about women. Think anything, about kissing. Anything, right? You know, true, it's true. Yeah. The restaurant, your favorite meal. There you go. Your, your, your whatever in your brain's going. The first crazy. time you watch the movie. Yeah, nothing. The movie. Yeah, 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 nothing, yeah Everything yeah. is just, so. Yeah, everything. Your first time is always the best. You know, that's just how it is. But. Yeah, that's I why mean, it's much easier being a kid than an adult. Yeah, Ooh, in my opinion. Okay, new experiences. Yep, you run out of them. No, and you then do. the people that never get out of their small town, they have the most issues with mental health because it's like, of course, there's nothing to look forward to. The sour and haze thing, bro. It's like people are chasing. Remember, there's so many layers to it that why I yeah. don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. right. Like I'm not going to say names. I tried all the sours out here. I love They're all not the it. classics, but. But it's like, it, it, it is an interesting, but it can't be a remix. It has to be the exact class. It has to be yeah, the exact yeah, class. Yeah, yeah. But and that's really hard to do at this point. My opinion is genetics have just advanced too much. So it's like buying an old car. We're in LA, right? We see all the old cars driving up this down the street. But bro, at the end of the day, it's still a 1960 car. It probably doesn't have air condition. It definitely doesn't have ways. And it doesn't have all this. It doesn't have Apple Play. It looks great from the exterior. It's obviously, but it doesn't have the new technology that everything else is. It's just like everything is advanced you know technology whatever or people are growing different than they were back then like can you match that and at the end of the day you're competing with your memory which you cannot win you can't beat your memory it, it, you just can't do it you know wow it's a great point bro you know and i just i don't believe i, I smoked a shit ton of sour and haze like I, i've come across good haze though like like this is this dude up in our uh, main man he grows some fire haze some piff and uptown haze but, um snipe over there or snipe something and man he grows fire but it's far and few in between it's like that real sticky stuff that you can slap on the wall and it's not going to fall off the wall like i haven't seen it same I have with not skunk we used to get some insane skunks and i haven't seen skunk in 12 same with they juicy fruit dead, yeah. we had originally got had a strain called juicy fruit and then like one of my big karmatic things i wanted to do was get it back to the guy who kind of started the wave and like he had lost it through a raid years ago yeah i finally get it 12 15 years later i get it back to him and he grows it for two runs and he's like i don't know bro it just ain't what I remember. And he's like, and the conversation we had for days was, do you think it's we just remember it better than it used to be? Yeah. Because it was one of the first strains that was ever. And we kind of were like, yeah, I think it is. And he killed it. Yeah. After it took years to acquire this thing. And then once we got our hands on it, we're just like, it's not what we remember. No, it's it's right. like, it was phenomenal, but now weed is so different. It's like, I don't know. Then we have thoughts like, well, it could have been a bag seed. It's You just don't know. It's like with sour, a lot of the bags that are going around right now, 
I don't remember it being the sour that we used to smoke, especially not that, that was Pat really God's used to show man. me. You break it up and stick it to your hand. The stuff now is dry. Yeah, it's, we, yeah I, you're right about that. It is dried up. It is. It's like, I, I, I just, I think people got to let it go. My humble opinion. First, listen, this is where, I don't know, we could, or we can just go into it now. It's like, there's a whole politics behind weed. I don't think people understand, like, and I've always thought this was a, a great attribute of mine. Like, I feel like I understand the market layout. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to separate this game into markets. You got to separate this game into Eng overseas, UK, California, and the East Coast. They are three completely different markets. You can't target all three. You, some people can, but you can't. They, overseas, what do they want? Skittles, right? They want Z, 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 Blue Zushi. I, I agree with them, by the way. California, what do they want? <laughs> OG, 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 or 41s, Biscottis. Let me tell you, the East Coast does not want any of those. You could take all your OGs, all your whatever. They Listen to me. I show people Skittles all the time. They will not take it. They don't want it. They'll buy it to smoke. But their clients back home, they don't want it. They only want candy. And how do you get it to go back? Like, first of all, where Sour and Haze was most popular is where? New York City, right? And the East Coast. They don't want it no more. They want candy. So how can you recreate something that the biggest market that it was known to come from doesn't even want it anymore? Think Ooh, about it. Wow. Man, great. You know what I mean? Think about it. It's like you, you, your biggest client base don't want it. You say so you who want do you go it, to? then it shows up and... Everyone's not down anymore because it's like the memory thing. It goes back. Yeah. It's not what it was. It's not what it was. It's just uh, not. And it, but it's like you said. It's like looking at a classic car. It looks cool on the road, but then when you start driving it and shit, you're like, dude, I'm I'm gonna get back in my yeah, it's my degrees, new car have no where I got everything I need. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, I I feel that for sure. That's why I've, I'm not into the the classics and shit. It's like, yeah, it's cool to look this, at your your garage, but yeah, there's some few small that, batch growers that might grow a nice, you know, old school strain. But yeah. Those Going are dropping, here and there. they're dropping in such limited amounts that a few people get them and the select few smoke them, but it's not a mass product. And guess what? That grower could grow any strain well. Right. That's the point because that grower is so good, but it's again, it's not a mass appeal product. Hence why it's called small batch. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I think a lot of people are missing that point that your biggest client base that normally would be taking that from you because they live and breathe, eat sour back home in the East Coast. They don't want it. So what are you going to do? The, guess what? Most of the West Coast don't want it either. They want OG. So where's the sour going to if people don't want it? Like, you know what I'm saying? That's why I think that I'll stand on this one. The sour comeback is not happening. It's wow. just canceled. I'm, I'm interested to I see if remixes come back. Like there's Skittles times sour. I see like a lot of but sour. They have to be sour. It's got to be. Got to yeah, be crossed. The sour from Karma Genetics. But you know what's interesting is some of those are. So this is the cool thing, right? If you have 10 to 15 year old sour seeds, which I know a lot of people that do. Really? That's dope. But I'm saying that's a time. That's like a time capsule because now that is the real sour because yes. he bred with that 15 years yes. ago. So if you pop that, yes, it will be a remix, but. It's interesting, right? Because the market is so complex, but you're totally right, man. The East Coast wants the candy. I hear that so I look at it heavy. from a business standpoint, you know what I'm saying? And it's all numbers at the end of the day. They don't want it, so yeah. you, you got to get what they want. At the end of the day, Coca-Cola's not selling what you don't want. They're selling Coke. That's what you want. <laughs> they, you could fight the wave, but it's a lot easier to get on the surfboard and just go with it than to fight the wave. Hello guys, Alex here, owner of Mango Tech Store. We are the house of Trollmaster. We are the house of Think Bro. Whether you're growing commercially, growing at home, or growing in a tent, we got you. Come see us. We got the best pricing, best customer support. Nobody can beat us. Mango Tech. Like I said before, with the house of Trollmaster and with the house of Think Bro, we got the new lifters in-house. Order up. What's your, what's your take on the whole candy wave? It's not going anywhere. Ooh. Anywhere. The next thing does not exist yet. Does not exist. And I, that's going to take a while. I mean, like, I don't think people who, don't, who aren't in the candy game heavy, I don't think they understand it. I, when I tell you, what's the biggest market in the game? It's New York City, right? They all want candy. What are you going to do? You better get them candy. If you don't get them candy, listen to me. You're not going to last long there. And you know what else they want? And people might not like this, but guess what? It ain't going nowhere. They want bags. They want bags. They want fancy color bags. So all these people say, oh, it's just renamed Lemon Cherry, Lemon Run. I'm one of the most honest, outspoken people in the game. It is. 
whatever. It's run to lemon cherry. You could ask me, I'll tell you that. It's not a secret, but guess what? It, oh, it's all the same. It's not the same. How is it the same if I go to 10 different facilities to get it and they have 10 different phenos in it? It's not the same. Yeah, the, the terp profile or whatever might be the same. And yeah, it's not, it's going in a fancy bag, but guess what? That's the game. You the don't same, have to like it. Yep. You don't have to accept it, but it's a lot easier to accept it. They want candy. They want fancy, shiny bags. They want duck sauce. They want Terps and Caicos. That's what the game is. All the, um, and listen to me, I'm a, I'm a connoisseur, a real smoker. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm heavy in the small batch game. So I, I get it all, but listen to me, they want candy. You don't have, like, I know a lot of people aren't going to like what I said, but it's a bad game. This game is a bad game. Make fancy bags, creative bags, and that's what it is. It's like, you don't have to like it, but it's the truth. It's the real facts of this game right now. And like I said, fight it or don't. It's not going anywhere. What's the next thing? I, me personally, if you're asking me, Skittles is the best strain on earth. All I smoke, we smoke Blue Zussi. We smoke Skittles like me and you were talking about earlier. But guess what? They don't want it. So Skittles isn't the next thing. It might be the current thing to a real connoisseur but they don't want it. So what are you going to do? Are you going to take Skittles and cross it with runts? I hope you do personally. That, 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 to me, that sounds amazing. Skittles cross with OG. What? So you got Z face out there. People act like these strains don't exist already. Like everybody, oh, OG's coming back. Bro, OG hasn't gone anywhere. Where's it gone? You can go get a fucking pound for 800. Or if, we, Ryan had the best quote ever. There's a thin line between an $800 pound and an $800 ounce of OG. This, that was a quote for the ages. That's a fucking real line. Nobody is coming, flying across the country, coming to LA, bringing it back to New York saying, hey, be easy, where's the OG? I flew all the way across the country to grab OG. Let me tell you, I've never heard that once and I'll never hear it. They don't fucking want it. OG was never big on the East Coast. It will never be big in the East Coast. Shit, the stuff that was big on the East Coast isn't even big over there. We just said they don't even want the sour and haze anymore. They want candy. And a lot of people in this game don't know their market base. And that, that's a humble opinion of mine. You know, they're trying to satisfy, you know, what they like to smoke or what their needs are. Bro, get a fancy bag and throw some fire candy in it. <laughs> Because that's what that's people used to do. Get to cooking. Buyers really? used to buy for themselves, and then people would just get to, to buy it from them because that was the weed dealer, and you yep. either get it or not. Now, the market's so complex that you have, it's more of like an evolved market where you're literally buying for like, well, what do you think they want? And you're buying into, but like I was going to say, the same lemon cherry gelato and runts cut and all these different phenos grown in different facilities are going to be different. The high yeah. is going to be different. They're going to taste different. So you're right. The, the same lemon cherry gelato cut grown in 10 different facilities facilities is going to look and taste different and smell different. Of course. So, yeah. And like you were saying, bro, it's a formula. Two plus two equals four. I promise you two plus two equals four. And the game I'm in, in the candy game, two plus two equals four. This is a very simple formula, you know, uh, creativity, you know, has a lot to do with it. Not everybody has that, but you know, it's the candy game that I'm in is how do you separate yourself? Okay. Like we all know it, all the big candy brands, they have candy in their bags. It's no, no secret, right? Some of them might not want to say it. I'm saying it. We have candy in our bags, right? So it's like this. How do I make be easy buds different from so-and-so, right? How do I separate the two? Like how we are, and bro, we all know this. We're out here. LA, the Bay, it's a small area. The big brands are fighting for the same packs. Like, you know what I'm saying? All the big brands are, it's a small area, you know, the, the, facilitate, the facilities want the big brands to represent their packs, right? So most big brands, they're working with them, they get in the packs. So it's like, how do you, you know what I mean? How do you beat that? It's like, you can't, there's a formula in there. And yeah, I don't know. It, people just don't want to accept it, but it just is what it is. Yeah. You know, it's not going anywhere, anywhere. You know, LA is a small place. It's hard to get the packs. So how do you separate yourself? You got to, in my game, I'm making bags. And you know what else? People don't want to like to hear this. Oh, bees, you. I'm forcing these bags down your throat. You know what I mean? I'm going to keep coming bags. One of, a client told me one day, I remember when I first started out here, he was like, he was my first client ever out here. He was like, he bought, came by shop. He didn't come back for the next two times. I was like, damn, what happened, bro? He's like, still the same stuff. I've already had it. Listen to me. That's all I needed to hear. Oh, so you need new bags, you're telling me? Guess what you're going to get? going to get bags up the wazoo. They're coming, baby. Get ready. And that was it. But after that, see you later. It just took off, you know, and that's just the realness. I got, you know, I got on the right, 
Yeah, well, it just it no, it's true because it just shows you. I mean, every pack You're is like, different. Oh, I need to get back in the lab. Yeah, let's get these fucking bags. Different packs, different bags, different flavors, different batches. It's it like look how many different. Is, man. Yeah, look how many different growers are out there. You can collect from and pick and choose and then brand out. I can so, try to please the connoisseur people, the facility, you know, the old school people in this game, and, or I can try to please myself, the connoisseur me, or I can run this like a business. What's the best way to run this like a business? Right, candy. I, I'm an East Coaster. I'm going to, I'm loyal to the East Coast. I live out here. I love the LA, obviously I live here, but I know the East Coast mind. I born and raised in Boston for 38 years. I only moved out here in, in April 28th in the heart of COVID. I moved out here two years ago, you know? So it's like, I know how to relate to them. So it's like, I know what they want. Uh, they want flashy bags. Like that's what it is. How do you separate yourself? You got to give it to them. Like, I'm not going to not give you what you want. People will literally tell me what they want. Am I not supposed to do that? Or, or am I supposed to ignore it? No, uh, pretty easy. Tell me what you want so I can make it happen. And that's it. They want bags. Okay, let's get bags going. So many people don't listen to their customers. You don't. That's the, you know, and I, I do want to go back to my history too, but I want to say something about your customers. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, my customers will tell you this. You could take my phone right now. Prior to when I sat down, there's not one unread DM. I answer 100% of my DMs. I don't care if I'm hiding it or if I'm talking to you. I have conversations with people I'll never meet. They could be in the Midwest. I don't know where you are. I've had, I have running conversations, year long conversations with people that will never meet in my life, never done business. It could be a random person from wherever the fuck. They just talk. You can, I guarantee you, if you message me today, I will answer your message. Just don't be disrespectful. I am a people's person. I'm a real, this is my passion. I love the game. This saved my life when I was getting high. It'll save my life in the next stage I'm going to, I want to talk about. And you know what I'm saying? I'm passionate about this. You can talk to Be Easy Buds any day of the week about we. You want to ask me questions? I'll give you advice. You want my designer? I'll give you my designer. You want my printing company? I'll give you it. Not to be cocky, you don't have my mind at the end of the day. You don't have the ideas. I want to see everybody win. Anybody can message me today. Yo, Be Easy, who's your designer? Wanda, the, Wanda Studio, the best designer in the game. You know, who's your printing company? Slap Hub LA and then the Goat of Goats in East Boston, Graphic and Prints. You know, and I'll tell everybody, I'll give you the game. That's what I'm here for. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm 40 years old. I want to see the young kids win. I want to see everybody win in this game. And that, that's just what it is. Yo, I'm here at Grow Generation. And what do they have? One of our sponsors, Lux Lighting. The highest quality components designed in Los Angeles and distributed globally. Go to LuxLighting.com to find out more and find out what all the big grows and all the pros are using to grow. Hey, so we want to give a major shout out to a premier sponsor of the show, CanFan. We've been rocking with CanFan since the beginning of this thing. I remember when Black Leaf came to me and said, hey, when you're smoking inside, you should really hook up a CanFan. CanFan with a CanFan fan and then a controller to control that fan. So when you're smoking, light up, boom, cut the fan on. You don't piss your neighbors off, keep everything kosher. And I know that Black Leaf only found that out because of one reason. I mean, essential in smoke rooms, essential in grow rooms, same thing. We're killing smell. Can filters, can fans. The product line is essential in any grow room. We've been rocking it for a decade plus. First smoke of the day, can filters, family. Why do you have to? That's why I love Ryan so much, you know what I'm saying? And, and EK and all of those dudes, because I have a really close relationship with EK, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, bro, they give game. Like, hang out in Ryan's office for an hour. An hour. The fucking people that walk through that office are the biggest of the biggest. I'm sitting there one day, you got fucking Ray Bama walks in, you got John Capetta from the High Times. I'm like, bro, these are the biggest dudes in the game. I'm sitting here smoking a blunt and they know who Be Easy is. What? How? How do you know who I am? Bro, I'm a regular dude from East Boston. I'm nobody. And these dudes know who I am. Like, how? Like, it makes no sense to me. But that, bro, he gives you game. You know what I'm saying? You, anything he posts, I'm going to watch because it's game. Same with EK. EK changed my life in Boston. Like, he changed my life. When they were doing that tour up and down the East Coast after the Super Bowl, right before COVID hit, he spent like a month, month and a half in Boston. Me and him and my partner, we, we went to sell this game. We went to dinner every night. They, they stayed in East Boston with us. Like, watching a real boss work, like, 
I wasn't that at the time, you know. I'm talking coordinating. Now I do it, but he's coordinating from the East Coast three hours ahead with Ryan and the team back here three hours behind on his phone. Like, what? I think I'm bad on my phone now, bro. These dudes are like beasts. They're fucking machines. And I got to witness that with my own eyes, what it really takes to, to be at that highest level of the game. Not many people can say that. Like, what's Doge, the biggest brand out there? I mean, let's call it spade a spade, right? There, I was with EK every day for a month, like dinner, Southeast games, casino, whatever. And like the knowledge you get all day, bro, that's priceless. Like, you, can't put a, you can't put a price on that. And I've been blessed to be in those rooms, you know? And that goes back to what I was saying earlier. I've always had the best relationships, like, like Gulf Coast, like my homie Gulf Coast LA out here, like, bro, what? I owe, listen to me, without Gulf Coast LA, right, I owe that dude so much. Like, bro, he gave me the keys to the small batch car. Take the keys, go with it. Like, bro, I'm getting Nemo, I'm getting fucking whatever I want. What? Yeah, I don't have to get that. You, don't, you think Nemo's hard to move? It's the easiest shit in the world to move. Price, you can complain about the price, 14, 15, 16. Guess what? There are people lining up in the DM. There are people buying it every fucking day, an ounce every other day. I promise you that. You don't have to believe it. I'm telling you. Bro, gave, he don't have to do that. Gave me the keys to run with it. Like, how, how do you, how do you um, thank somebody for that? Like, you know what I'm saying? They, talk about putting you on. Bro, you know the clout that comes with getting an emo drop? The biggest players in the game are in your DM. It's like, I, he don't yeah, have to true. give you that. He don't have to give me that. He did that. Like, that's what I mean by having the best people in the game around me. Like, these people want to see me win. So what type of person am I to not pass game on to other people and not make you win? And I'd be a selfish prick, and that's not me. Like, anybody, I promise, message me. Just be, be respectful. Ask me any question. I will answer it. And not a quick answer. I'll give you in-depth, whatever. And like, that's how the game should be. Why you want to, and like, I, I love the East Coast. I'm from the East Coast, but like, I think the East Coast got to learn that. Like out here in LA, like, you know, you might have your issues with a handful of people, but this place is fucking close. Like everybody's with each other. If, if Backpack Boys throws an opening, you're going to see all the big brands there. So on and so forth. Those are Thursday it's night. Every alliance. Thursday night, we're all there. It's Every alliance. Thursday night, we're always there, all of us. People don't know that. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, bro, you, how's this, guys? If you want to get plugged in, show up to Doze's Mixer every Thursday. You want to be in a room full of players? And possibly make connections. Or it's fucking Backpack free. Boys event. It's free. Come in there. The game is free. If yep. you want the game, it is free. Cookies like, Maywood event. All these events that have like you start to you're like, oh shit, that's the guy that owns Green Wolf. Oh shit, that's the guy that owns. All you do is walk up to him and talk to him. Yeah. You're smoking a blunt or the joint. You know, you know how it is at the Doja thing. Everybody's smoking. Who, well, who's not gonna talk while you're smoking, bro? It's the most common thing in the world. Like that's why weed's the best drug in the world. It brings everybody together. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's natural. People, I had a whole, I had a true story. Somebody messaged me yesterday. Say, yo, be easy. How do I network? How do I get better? That's, that's literally what I told them. I said, bro, next Thursday, go to Doze's thing on Hollywood Boulevard. When you walk in there, 80% of them are players. Just talk to somebody. That's how you network, bro. The game is free. You just have to go and get it. Like, it is. And this is a small community in LA. Once you get in the door, you're pretty much in the door. As long as you keep your name clean and you do good business and you know you don't fuck anybody over, but oh, just get in the door and go get it. A lot of people, they don't want to take the easiest step sometimes. Like, you guys have been there. That's a pretty easy step to show up to Hollywood Boulevard. Everybody's there. Like, there's a lot of important people in that room. They look at like it's not guaranteed you know? a connection. Like you're handing them a shovel and you're like, somewhere down there, there's some gold. Yeah, dig. But you got to dig. Yeah. But yeah. how far? Oh, we don't, we can't don't tell you that. To. You got to dig. You got to dig, bro. Just yeah. fucking dig. And it's like, that's it's what different I do. for like, everybody. I'm a go-getter. Mm -hmm. It's different for everybody. Like how far you got to yeah, dig. Gotta it's go, different bro. for everybody. That's what I'm saying. Like, so... Yeah, like it's different for everybody, bro. Mm -hmm. It really is. But you got to get out there and get 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 swinging and stuff. I I, would, I think I, I talk about this is that like in this cannabis community, there's a lot of you know obviously in every community, right? But a lot of suffering from like mental health, and it's a lot of the people, especially in cultivation, they don't get out. <laughs> no, they're in their houses. All no, day. I'm serious. Yeah, though. Like, and, then, the and, then, and then and then and then and you don't. You're you're obviously this doesn't apply I'm to everybody. With you. I'm but, with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I could, you know, mm-hmm. it's a it's a demanding job. Seven days a fucking week. Not an easy job by any means. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not not that part is is clear. It's just that if you're in a you know a space, no light, mm-hmm. like artificial light, like all these things, it's, it's got to depressing. Yeah, it's got to enough you know, interaction, human interaction, and 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 so that part lacks that part, and then and then the social interaction part. It's like we lack the part where it's like you got to go to that same place You're, seven days a week all fucking day gotta. so it's like you, you got to come together and merge and shit but i, I feel you where it's, you know a lot of people i think even coming out of covid mm-hmm. yeah they, they, it's, right. it's, definitely it's fucking it. it got easy to be comfortable yeah and not do it that's my biggest thing i i t- that's my that I, I told at least three people that i told somebody today they asked i forget what the topic of conversation was i said stop doing whatever makes you comfortable Whatever makes you comfortable, stop immediately. I I do not show my face. This is the first time ever I've thought about this constantly. What should I do? Should I cover up? Should I do this? No, fuck it. Here we are, bro. It's so uncomfortable. But you know what? Now I'm here. I'm sitting here. I'm mm-hmm. loving it. Whatever makes you uncomfortable, do it because that's how you're going to be the person that you need to be. If you, you just you want to be comfortable, be. shit, you're going to stay the same person. Do uncomfortable. Like, I want to go back a little bit to like how I came out to LA. Like, bro, I told him one day. I'm moving to L.A. tomorrow morning. No, I want to go back even further. So I never came to L.A. on any type of business in my entire life. I've been to L.A. one time before I moved out here. Me, him, and about five other friends from East Boston back home, we went to, I'm a diehard Celtics fan. If you are on my Instagram, you know this. A bleed green Celtics fan. We came out here to go to Celtics Lakers game. Nope. That was the only time I ever been out here. We stayed out here for like five days. No business, nothing. I'm going to the dispensaries and getting my weed. Like no business. I was busy bud back home, but I wasn't anybody out here. I came out here as a tourist going to a game. We're in the airport in February. I remember like it was yesterday, LAX. They announced the first case of COVID announced in LAX that day. I told everybody, sit with me. I will live in LA within a year. I guarantee I say it right here. They didn't believe me. I don't know. I don't know if my partner believed me. I say I don't think any of them believe me. Two and a half months later, I moved to LA. Not a year. Two and a half months later, I said one day to him, I said, "Yo, I'm moving to LA in the morning." I came out here with twenty six thousand dollars in a in a fucking Airbnb for thirty days, and that was it. A month in, my pit bull back home bit my fucking shit zoo's face, broke her jaw, and cost me eight k. I was down to eight k. I had no plugs out here, no friends, nothing. Me. That's it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to let that fucking stop me. This is my goal. This is my dream. I'm going to fail or I'm going to die failing or I'm going to fucking make it. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. There's no, there's no such thing as failing. What the fuck is failing? I'm not failing in anything I do. So, you know, I came out here, both feet in the ground. One thing led to another, you know, slow, 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 you know, and it happened eventually. But like, I had no base outside of Boston. Like I was always up there. Like I was probably the second biggest brand in Boston. High tolerance has always been the biggest, you know? And it's like, I was there always doing my thing, but I came out here with nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was just the Boston base. And then being out here, it got crazy. Like I I took a lot of losses. Hold on, slow down though. So so you sell off all your belongings or you just leave everything behind? Couches, beds, suitcase? No, I've been keeping a buck. So... I, you got right, so Airbnb. I kind of just Airbnb it and just said, "I'm out, man." Fuck see, it. I kind of want to go back a little further because what I'm about to say might yeah. lead to a different yeah. story. But like, I was sick for a long time. I live with my parents. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because like, yeah. I was really sick. So I, at that time, I was still well. Okay, so when COVID started, like everybody else, you really flourished in COVID. COVID made you a hustler. You prove you're a hustler or not. So at this time, we had an Airbnb in East Boston that we were working out of, like heavy. You know what I'm saying? So. But like prior to that, bro, like I was living with my parents because I was sick for a while, for a long time, you know? So once that happened, you know, we got out, we get the Airbnb and it's flowing. And then I said, bro, I'm moving to LA tomorrow morning. I got an Airbnb, like I said, and the rest is history. But yeah, that's how it all started. Wow. Like it, was, it was a whim. Like it was a little a whim. You know, I got the Airbnb for 30 days and then I got another one for 30 days. Airbnbs were so cheap during COVID. And then um, I remember during my third Airbnb, I left 14 days in because I finally got an apartment in Hollywood at the time. And, you know, but that was it. Like it was Airbnb to Airbnb, 18K to my name. And fuck it. You, what are you going to do? You just got to make it work. A hustler's going to make it work all the time, right? So we made it work. It, you know, losses or whatever. But it, it happened, you know. And then there was a time where I, I kind of lost focus on the brand. 
And I started playing high stakes poker a lot because I'm really good at poker. You know what I'm saying? So I've been playing these high stakes cash games and penthouses and mansions out here, you know? And um, yeah, man, it's like, and then for a good five, six months, like that shit was like the focus. Like, bro, poker life is not an easy life. You're starting late, you're playing all fucking night. But then it was, you know, like, you know, it came good from poker that I met my fiance there. But, you know, eventually I, I knew like it was taken away from the brand. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm waking up at fucking four in the afternoon. Like I got to stop. And I put all the focus in the brand. I got a big break from a local delivery service out here. And um, it put Terps and Caicos on the menu. Boom. And it was there. That was it. The rest was history from there, you know? And, but yeah, and, and that was it. Like it, it, it really took off. I got, I got a good break. and um. Like, to, and, and it just it benefited a lot from being on that delivery service. You know, it happened quick. What What's the inspiration behind some of these designs of these bags? Like, I see duck sauce, Terps and Caicos. I mean, so this is this is interesting right here. And, I love uh, that one. And a lot of people seem to favor this one. It's really duck cool. sauce is the hottest strain in the game. You know, often imitated, never duplicated duck sauce. It is the best in the game. But shout out Fumi in high volume. You know. Like they they're doing their thing in New York, but and out here too. But fool me, like yo, this kid's impressive. Like you understand what I'm saying? Like they're younger than me, you know, late twenties, twenty seven, whatever. But and we had had a collab on something called Candy Chaos, and um, it, you know, went well in New York. You know, I obviously want to get into New York as a, as a brand. You know, everybody wants to get into New York, so he came to me with a collab for Candy Chaos, and it worked well. And then. He came to me one day and he sent me a DM. Yo, I got a great, I got, I got a great name. You want to collab on it? I'm like, yeah, what is it? He goes, duck sauce. My response was, okay, cool. That was my response. If I'm being 100% honest, I didn't think anything of it. I'm an East Coast, obviously. I, I love fucking duck sauce, but I didn't think anything <laughs> of it. Like, you know, I'm like, all right, cool. Bro, he posted the bag on Instagram. Oh, no, excuse me. He sent me a picture of the bag. I told him. I'll never forget it. I wish I still had my account that fucking got deleted, but I don't. I told him that's going to be the biggest bag in the game. I said, mark my word. I seen it. Like, you know when you see something and you know it's it? But you got to remember, like out here in LA, that bag might not mean something because duck sauce isn't big out here. Go to fucking New York, the East Coast, and get your Chinese food three o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a staple. I seen the bag and I was like, bro, that's fucking it. It's the one. I, I just knew. Like, I got that feeling. That was just a picture he sent me. And I knew, told him it's going to be the biggest bag in the game. It's going to change both of our lives. We posted it on Instagram for the first time, bro. What I told, I thought it was going to be the biggest, a fucking thousand times bigger than I thought it was going to be. I never got so many fucking fire emojis. I, I when I tell you the reaction to it, I've never seen anything like it. It was so fucking, like I'm still blown away. Like, I'm talking like big people congratulating me. Like, I remember Golf Coast coming to the crib and he said, bro, I want to congratulate you for Dutch. I'm like, you want what? Con for what? It's just a fucking bag. No, bro. People, he goes, people, everybody's talking about it. Like, I'm hearing it about it. I'm like, that's crazy, bro. Another big brand came to me and said, he asked for it for his menu. And I was like, bro, I was like, it showed out. Like, it's gone. He's like, bro, you, you did your thing on it. And I was like, bro, wow, we really did something here. Like... And it was fucking, I'd never, to this day, like we have sweet and sour sauce, we have sriracha, but bro, duck sauce changed the game. Like it changed everything. Terps and Caicos is the staple of like my brand, okay? That was the first strain to put me on the map out here. But that was in certain areas. It, it got, it's big, you know, it's still the staples, it's still the one that people want, but duck sauce is just, it's the one. It's the one, like I have a lot of bags. You know, I try to make it, I try to get the one, there's only one, or maybe one and a half, the Terps and Caicos is up there, but like, there's only one that is truly it, and it's duck sauce. It changed the game, it changed the landscape of packaging in New York, and everybody wanted it, it didn't matter who you were, you know, it, it, and I owe a lot to Fumi and High Volume for that, you know, for offering me the collab, and to this day, you drop the duck sauce, bro, people fucking want it. You can do, I can do a poll on my Instagram. It's going to win. It's going to win the poll. It just is what it is. It's the one everybody wants, you know? It Big really shout is. out to that guy for coming up with that and hitting you with that. That's how, huge. How do you, uh, how do you like weigh out like, all right, 
it's time for a new a new bag. I'm gonna put these batches in this these bags or like roll out new stuff like that, <laughs> like to like mix it up. Do you is it a timing thing or is it just like people listen to me? I'm I'm a really honest guy. So all these old school growers, how about this? One of the I'm doing, you know, the brand has some a little bit of motion right now. I'm gonna be totally honest. And you guys are ready for this one. I saw my first grow last week. How was that one? I saw my first marijuana plant growing last week. I'm 40 years old. I had never seen a plant growing before. I fucking pick out a pack for you though. I, you know what I mean? Just, it just, I'm not that. I'm not a grower. I'm a fucking trapper. This is what I do. Bags, well, I got bags already picked for September. It's fucking July. Bags are already here for August and September. It just is what it is. It's a rotation every week to two weeks. Honest to God, bro, it's a client base. You know, most clients are two-week rotation. That's what the bags are. You know, this is a bad game. I admit it. Like, I'm not afraid to say it. I don't say it. I'm honest. You know why I don't care? My clients don't care. The, the, the people smoking, they don't care. You know, you know and that's just what it is. It's like in the game that we're in, we're a different game. You know, I'm not a fucking curator, a cultivator. I'm not that. I'm not a grower. It's a different game. And, but here's the thing. You know, like Juan said, I can do what they can do. They can't do what I do. But here's the thing, right? I have a candy brand that a lot of people hate on, but guess what? You know what else I got? I got the best fucking small batch in the world every time. So what do you want? You want to hate on me because I got candy? Awesome. Cool. Yeah. I put lemon cherries in runs and bags. You know what I mean? I do. But what else? You want Nemo? You want fucking whoever the fuck? I have that too. So what are you going to say? You know what I mean? I have the best of both worlds for you. So you can't hate on me for that. I, 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 I'm serving. This is a business. I serve the market and what they want. You don't want candy? Awesome. I got Nemo, or I got fucking lemon tree, I mean lemon bean, which is my favorite thing smoking right now, or I got blue sushi. I have all that too, but you know, not what they, most people want the candy. I'm going to give you what you want. And I don't think people understand that. People want to get in these niches or locked in one space. For what? It limits yourself. I'm not going to lock myself in a little box. I'm going to give you what you want. And I, I think I have a real understanding on that part of the game. You know, it's not that, e it's not that difficult to listen to the people and that, and you you can go a lot further by doing that without a doubt i agree dude crazy shout out young lb shout Fuck out yeah. ray bama what a fucking wave bro mm -hmm. this wave like i i think we're only realizing how big this wave yeah, is you know we are, because no. you know what it is though is that the northeast is so big there mm -hmm. New York's the biggest. It's big everywhere. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But there, and man, that's the market. It's Isn't that the market? huge yeah. there. Look at Texas. Like you can't even really bring anything else up. No. no. At, literally at all. For real. I have 41. They don't want it. Texas is, a, I do well in Texas. Bro, if it ain't candy, they're not taking it. Like Skittles, they don't fucking want it. I want it. They don't. What, you know, you, I used to be that guy. I was that guy. You're smoking this. You're smoking that. Start, try 41. Try biscotti. But you know what then I realized? I can just smoke the 41 in biscotti. But if you like, I like candy, but if, the, what am I going to target? Am I going to target 5% of the market or 95% of the market? People who target 5% usually aren't successful. Those are the ones complaining about the people selling candy, if you want to be the truth, you know? Candy's targeting 95% of the market. That's the market share. Take it or don't. But you can't, women lie, men lie, numbers don't. At the end of the day, it's a numbers game. It's very easy, you you're, know? You're making a lot of people with, Warehouse is full of candy growing right now. I'd be like, yes. Hey, yeah, reach out to me. I told you <laughs> this was going to be. Yeah. The yeah. <laughs> They're telling their head grow. They're like, I told you, bro. Man, let's, we got to yeah. keep the, the, the runs going. But it's got to be good candy. Like, this yeah. shit is frosty. It's got to see shitty candy, this too. Don't get me wrong. It's got to be gassy, frosty. Mm -hmm. Got to have that hit, that candy, you know? Yeah. yeah it has to have that. It's got to get you high as fuck. And that's just what it's got to do. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, man. 100%. 100%. I'm all slouched over, been smoking heavy. <laughs> Man, that's a wild journey, bro. Yeah. I mean, hell of a story. Yeah. What's it like the first day you land in LA? What do you do besides just kind of look around? Is LA like what you think it is? All right. So I'm going to go back to my health. Okay. Mm -hmm. So on July 4th, 2013, like for the week prior, I'm walking around, bro. My ankles are fucking the size of my calves. It's like, it's just, just straight. It's, there's no shape. And I'm, couldn't even tie my fucking shoes. Fourth of July comes. My mom sees it for the first time. Cause you know, I'm not living there at the time. This was 2013. I had my own spot. And I'm she's like, Hey, what's wrong with your ankles? They're fucking really swollen. So like, you got to go to the hospital. I'm like, well, it's July 14th. Everybody's over. Let's barbecue. My cousin Richie was there. Who's a nurse. He saw him and said, bro, you got to come over here real quick. Sit down. 
starts failing my legs or whatever. He's like, you okay? I'm like, yeah, I feel fine. He's like, bro, we got to go to the clinic over here. We go to the clinic. They draw my blood. And the doctor says, you're in kidney failure. I'm like, I don't know what that means. I was like, I'm going home. They said, no, you're going to go to Mass General or you're going to die. I was like, what do you mean? I was like, I'm going home. Like, I was got up. I was like, I'm going home. My cousin had to sit me down and say, no, bro, listen, Bobby, look at me. If you don't go to the hospital, you are going to die. Like, he's not lying to you. You cannot live. Your kidneys don't work. I said, what do you mean? He told me straight up. I went to Mass General. They, um, they did all the tests. Yeah, kidneys don't work. You have to start dialysis tomorrow. If your kidneys don't, they don't produce nutrients, you can't process nutrients. So You can't get rid of the water in you. There you go. You know what I mean? You can't get rid of the toxins in the water. Mm -hmm. So you have to start dialysis tomorrow. I mean, what the fuck is dialysis? Only time, yeah, I was like, what the fuck is dialysis? He's like, you're going to have to go sit in a chair tomorrow for two hours. Um, wait, what are they? At the time, no, they said tomorrow, you're going to go get a catheter put in your chest. Um, they put the catheter in my chest. and. They were like, like, you know, that's a day surgery. Then like, you're going to start dialysis on this day. I think it was like five, six days later. And um, you're going to sit down for two hours. They're going to attach the catheter to the machine. And they're going to take all your fluid out. I did it. Okay, cool, whatever. You know, I do it. I go back to the hotel. I mean, the hospital room. I feel good. Like, I get a little energy for the first time. Next day, I'm dead. Fucking dead. I feel like shit. So he explains to me. You know, you have to do dialysis at three days a week for four hours every day. I mean, what do you mean? I got to sit in a chair for four hours every day? You got to sit in a chair for four hours every day. I did that for five and a half years, almost six years. Holy shit. You know, um, being in the chair for six years, dying, that shit gives you a lot of time to think about the future. You know what I mean? And like, yeah, man. Like, what am I going to do with my life if I ever get off this chair? And I wasn't going to waste it, you know? Um, I was trapping off that shit always, you know? I would go there. I would go at like, probably like 6.30, no, probably like 5.30 in the morning. You know, you start your session at 6. You're on there till like 10. You get off. You know, you're fucking done at this point. I'm talking like, you can't get rid of your water. So, like, I'm peeing. Like, I couldn't fill a shot glass up in a day. Like, you know, the water has nowhere to go. So they do it by kilos. They're taking off four kilos every other day. That's 8.8 .8 pounds. You're a fighter, basically, cutting weight every other day. When you get 8.8 .8 pounds taken out of your body, you're fucking done. So I go home, I sleep till like 5 o'clock. I wake up, I serve my place, you know? I go meet everybody, drive around, go home. The next day was my off day, you know? whatever, trap again, you feel a little bit better. You feel better on your off day, you know, because you got life the day before, you know what I mean? Then the next day, back in the chair for four hours. Sleep for five hours, go trap at night. Next day, feel better. Next day, back in the chair for fucking six years. You know what I'm saying? And like, yeah, man, it's a hard life. And like, not by yourself. Was, was this the kidney failure? Like, was this, was this a time after you were using or during your using? It was, but like, they never could figure out if that had something to do with it. Like, I, I always get asked that. I always wonder it. But I never get a definitive answer. I have a really, really, really rare condition. I want to say it's called like C3GN or something like that. And um, it's where your immune system attacks your kidneys from within. So, like, they did a biopsy. They sent it out to labs. But, like, they could never, like, give me an... an a distinct reason why. Um, I actually believe I was told that it more likely didn't have anything to do with it because it was more just your autoimmune system, you know, and more of that and just the shit of the shit end of the stick. But yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I always wonder if it did in the back of my mind, but like, I don't even regret getting high. Like that's what people after you regret that. I don't I make it crystal clear. I would not be the person I am without that stage of my life. Like I was a lying, stealing piece of shit back then. Now, I'm the most honest person you'll ever fucking meet in your life. You only lie when you're afraid of something. I'm not afraid of anything. And I, I'm not saying that like a tough guy. I'm not afraid of any repercussions, you know what I'm saying? Because I live a good life. You know, back then, you're lying because you're, you're living a shitty life. You're afraid of everything, you know? So I appreciate when I got high because it is now. I can look back and say, fuck, man, you know, you overcame that and... 
The kidney failure is another chapter like that, you know, but when you're in a chair for four hours every day, every other day, three days a week, you're by yourself. Like, yeah, I got my mom, my dad, my friends, but like, they're not in the chair with me. You know, my mom's a cancer recovery person. You know? she, she knows what it's like, but she's not in the chair with me. You know, my dad's not in the chair. It's like, you're doing that shit by yourself. Nobody knows what's going on. And it's like, well, you got to do it. It's like, what the fuck am I going to do? I only know how to trap. I don't work. I work selling pizzas, but I do that to fucking trap and make it easier. You know? So it's like, you got to do it. I was, tr I do it on that shit. Go home, feel like shit. Man, this is a true story. I delivered pizzas in Winthrop, Mass. I probably threw up on every single street in Winthrop. That's a true story. I can say that honestly. I probably threw up on every single street in Winthrop at one point. Because, bro, but I was still out there doing what I had to do. You have no choice. What are you going to do? Like, this is what I do. This is what the life I, I chose a long time ago. I'm with it. I accept it. But, you know, it's also given me a great life. It made me a stronger man. And, but you know what else? It makes me appreciative. Because I really know, I really fucking know what it's like to be dying or be an addict and have nothing and live for nothing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Live for a hope. A hope that one day you get to live a good life. Like, you know, not a lot of people experience that. So that shit gave me a lot of character, without a doubt. It really did. And I wouldn't be this person now. I wouldn't have the drive I have. Like, I can say I am the most competitive person you'll ever meet when it comes to business. Like, I don't mean this in a bad way. Just how I was raised. Like, I want to crush everybody. I want to be the best. I'll work with you. I will help you be the biggest, but I want to be the best. Like, but I'll help you get there with me. You know, you got to do your part, but like, I'm competitive. Like, I grew up watching Michael Jordan, these people, like, competitive. And like, you can't not be the best. Like, I want to be the best. I don't want to be second place. I don't want to be third place. And I have that drive because I wasted my whole 20s. I was sick for my 30s. And, you know, I just turned 40 this year. Like, my drive is, is driven from pain in, like, in a past that not anybody has. And, like, that's why I'm so focused on not fail failing and making this shit the best that it could be. Because it just needs to be. I, 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 didn't, I didn't get to this point for nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm not a religious guy by any means. But, like, I didn't go through that. God didn't put me through that or whoever the fuck you believe in. He didn't put me through that for nothing. He, he tested me. You feel what I'm saying? He said, all right, cool. You can handle that. Now I'm going to give you everything you deserve. And yeah, I work hard. I do work my ass off, but, you know, like I don't say that, I say this truly humbly. I've been through a lot and I genuinely deserve, you know, what's going on. I work hard for it and I'm appreciative and grateful where I am now. You know what I mean? I really am. And I owe a lot of that to my following, my supporters, and I, I'm grateful for them. I really am. Jeez, bro. That's fucking deep. You know, I and I want to ask a question. So when you're going through dialysis, because I've actually sat in the room with some of them before, there's other people in there going through dialysis with you mm -hmm. who are going through other situations. So it's not only you with your own thoughts. You're looking at people who are dying also, and you're like, holy shit, that person's bro, worse off than that's me. That's 2013. That's 2022. I'm 40. I was Ooh. 31. Not that long ago. This was the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two th I just got off dialysis two years ago. Like, I want to get back to the start of my brand because I made my brand 30 days after I got a kidney. 30 days later, I, I was in the designer's office making my original lo logo 30 days after I got a kidney. Like, that's how ready I was. Like, you know what I'm saying? Talk about that. So like, you've been on the list. But hold on, back to the dialysis thing. Like, I'm talking 30 years younger than everybody in the room. I'm 30 years younger than everybody. The average person, 60, 70, 80, 90, they're fucking old. I'm younger by far than all of these people like bro i'm a hip dude like you know like i shouldn't be in this chair that's what i'm thinking like why me like i'm active like you remember like at the time i'm in the gym heavy i'm like 185 solid i'm on juice at the time you know what i'm saying like i'm a big solid dude and it's like i'm in the gym fucking four hours a day i'm doing this and that it's like how did, how did i get here I'm eating great at the time. I'm on the fucking whatever 45 minutes a day like i'm eating salads and chicken how did I get here? Like this That's the key word. Yeah. That's what everyone's, how did yeah. I get here? Like what? I'm not an unhealthy dude, but it, bro, it just happens. It's like, what do you do? It's like, I have a fistula still on my arm from when I did. There's the scar. Like people, sometimes people say, hey, what's that? Like, you know, I have the scars still from dialysis. This is where they put the needles to go in. This is where they put the needles to go out. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, this is where they cut my arm to put a fistula in. They, they combine an artery and a vein. Like I have scars that I look at every day. And like, like my drive is different, bro. Like I have a kidney. I got my kidney April 
April 7th in um, 2018, um, okay? Bro, a kidney's only going to last me 10, 15 years. I'm 40 years old. What, I got 10 years left? I have to accomplish something in there before I need another kidney. Uh-huh. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to need one another day. Like, you only have a limited time on this earth. You better go fucking get that. Whatever is your motivation, you better fucking get it done. You cannot waste time. I promise you this. Like, I have a ticking timer in the back of my head always. I don't think of it every day, but there's times it'll come in there. You're going to need a kidney one day. You know, you might be on dialysis again one day. It's always going to be there. What if it's 15 years from now? My parents aren't around no more. Like, it's always in my mind. But you know what? I can't sit there and fucking worry about it because nobody gives a fuck. Nobody gives a fuck. You, gotta, you better get, get up in the morning, tie your fucking shoes, and do what you got to do. Because at the end of the day, you have it yourself. Like, I don't mean this. I'm going to say, I don't mean this as disrespectful to anybody from back home, but listen to me. I was on a chair for five and a half years, literally dying. No friends offered to get a kidney transplant. No fucking friends visited me in a fucking dialysis chair. Not one fucking time. I know that to this day. Dialysis tur- turned me like, like you feel me? Like, look, I'm a good dude, like at the end of the day, but at the, right here, I know, and I'm cool with this. I accept that everybody's for themselves, and that's okay. But a lot of people don't fucking know that. Like, I was dying. And my family members didn't get a kidney fucking, like some, some, maybe my uncles did, my cousins, they didn't go fucking get tested. None of them did. You don't think I remember that shit? I don't give a fuck about it. Like, it is what it is, but like, bro, nobody cares. Nobody gives a fuck. So it's like at the end of the day, you have you. Yeah, you have your friends, but there comes, there's always a line that people won't go to for you and that you got to do yourself. You know what I'm saying? I'm in a chair by myself. I'm dying by myself. You know, they can be like, yo, how you feel today? Does it fucking really matter? Or is it just a general question you're asking me? You know, and bro, it just is what it is. I, like nobody offered me anything when I was dying, you know, and that's why I'm so driven now. Like I owe it to myself. I have, I have business partners. I have friends. I owe it to myself to get to where I need to get to. I didn't fucking go through that shit for nothing. I deserve this because I bent through it and I work hard. You know what I'm saying? And and that's just what it is at the end of the day. You can feel bad for yourself. That, that shit don't mean nothing at the end of the day. You know, I've had my moments where I'm like, damn, why, why, why? But fuck that. You know, nobody cares. Go and get it by any means necessary. This is a dog eat dog world. Sometimes I say stuff in my post on Instagram. People don't like it. Sometimes you don't like the real. This is a dog eat dog world out here. Worry about yourself. Yeah, worry about your friends. Love your friends, of course. But always remember that there is a line that they won't go for for you. And that's a guaranteed fact. And it doesn't make them a bad person. Don't get me wrong. But as long as you know that in your head, you'll be better off in this life. And that's the honest to God truth. And I genuinely believe that, you know? I think it makes other people face their mortality and they get scared. I I know. Listen, I I don't, I don't, I don't hold it against them. But at the end of the day, the fact is the fact, you know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, but, but that drives me today. Yeah. I I feed off of it. Like, you know, I, I, I genuinely do. I, that's why, like, I, I just, I feed off it. I, it, it fuels me to this day to be the best that I can be because I'm never going to waste this moment that I'm in. Like, how many people get to do this? Like, bro, what is this, the 59th episode and fucking me, I'm on this? Like, bro, who am I? Like, but, you know, I worked hard to get to this place. My face card is great in this industry. I never fucked anybody over. And, you know, I, 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 I've earned this spot. You know what I'm saying? Like, going through all that built me to be prepared you know, to, for this moment when I got it and, and I wasn't going to fucking waste it the moment I got it. There's, there's no way. There's no way. How could you waste that moment? Not many people get it. You know, you got to seize it. Bro, yeah. hell of a story. Yeah. Hell of a story, hell of a life. Yeah. I love how when you talked about with Doja and I just love this when you were like, man, I saw him work and it, it, it instead of being like, man, how does this guy have all this shit? And this guy has these customers, you know, you internalized it and were like, bro, I got to step. I got to, I have to, I need to figure out, I need to get out there. I need to, be, you know, it was a lot of mirror in front of you instead. Cause some people take it the other way, right? Oh, yeah. Look at this guy with his, 
it's not that it's like, here's the level. Okay. Here's the level where I got to go now. It's just such a motivation. Next thing you know, you're out here. Next thing you know, like, well, you, you know, all the players. No, hating on Ryan is like hating on yourself. Or any well. hustler. Like, it's fucking, it makes no sense. That to has you. a lane. But EK, like, bro, like I said, you're around someone like that. You learn a lot. So the thing about Boston that was always different from other markets is like in Boston, we're very like local brand heavy. Like a lot of people in Boston have their own brands. You know, I had always had my own brand. So like back then, Doja didn't have the bags that they have now. They did not have bags. They had cans, as a matter of fact, or whatever. And I remember telling EK, like, bro, out here, they don't want that. They want fancy Mylar bags. I remember EK, oh, me and EK went to the fucking print shop. He let me make whatever type of design for like RS11. It wasn't even called Studio 54 then. It was called 54 Rainbows. Fucking these other strains. He let me design it though with my designer. He gave me the okay to put the Doja logo on the bag with my logo. I remember Ryan didn't even like that at one time, but you know what I mean? He said, bro, who are you? But you know, EK gave me the okay. We did it. And like, but I had my own brand. Like I was always, I didn't carry Put it this way, I wasn't carrying the brand if my logo wasn't on it, you know? Like, if I got a backpack, backpack thing, I'm buying the turkey. And I'm just going to make the bag with my logo on it. I'll tell you what it is, but my word was always gold in Boston. You know who, I said this before the show to you, but you know who one of my biggest inspirations in this game is? And the, bro, he, he don't even know this. I hope he watches this. But Smoke Up 212 is one of my biggest inspirations in this game, bro. You got to understand, right? I'm in Boston. He's in New York, okay? I'm looking at a dude who had the best of the best, Alien Labs, Connected, Cookies. But you know what? All that air shit was in his own fucking smoke-up jar. It might say Alien Labs on it, but it's in a smoke-up jar. I like, bro, this fucking, he gets it. He gets it. He's branding himself. But more than just getting it into know to brand yourself, in New York, his word must have been fucking pure gold because people never questioned it. People from Boston would drive there and get it off and they did not question it. I wanted to be that. I wanted to be the dude who had his own brand. If I say this is IRS 11, you, there's no doubt. You're not going to lie. You, okay, that's definitely it. If I say, like right now, if you get blue suits, you're not getting a bag with it. I don't give a fuck about it. I'm putting it in a, in a mason jar, how it should be served. You know what I'm saying? You, I n don't get questioned. Because they know my reputation is what it is. And I, all, and I got that from Smoke Up. I, I always fucking loved the way he did that. Always marketing himself. And I was like, bro, he's onto it. I remember telling my business partner right there and another kid from back home, because he wanted to do it. I was like, bro, you can't do it yet. You're not big enough. We're not big enough out here yet. We don't have the clout. Like, we didn't have the... Um, the recognition, like to know that, okay, the yo, social proof is yeah, what you, they have call to, it. you have to, mm. you have to, you got you got to build it up. You got to start, it, start with it probably in the jar or whatever, and then eventually he probably transitioned to it in his own jacket after he got the people. Yo, he's valid, he's good. Once I got to that point, I did it immediately because I branding at the end of the day is the key to everything. You know, like I want to brand, brand, brand. Yeah, I, I've all. Uh, I've been good at marketing my whole life. Like, I remember being in high school. Everybody knows the quarters right now that have the states on it. I, when I was in high school, they did a marketing thing before they were ever released. And they said, yo, what's the best way to market this? I came in third in the entire country, me and a homie, because I said you should put it in post offices and train stations. Because where are regular people going to go? It's like, you know, it, they loved it. They flew me to Washington, D.C. I just was always good at marketing, you know? And it just transitioned to the game with the bags or whatever. Like, may, in, in Boston, per se... I, I like it wasn't I wasn't coming up with my own names in Boston. Maybe toward the very end, but I don't know. I don't even think I was. It was like I said, it was getting the dose of packs or the connected packs or whoever's packing just putting it. Like if I got Area 41, I would make a space theme bag with B Easy logo Area 41. I, everybody knew what it was, no problem, you know. But it was always about branding, branding, branding. I, I just always thought that was the thing. And then when I came out here, I was like, you know, because remember back then I'm not selling candy. I came out here, you learn quick that you have to sell candy. So I was like, okay, we're going to start coming up with our own names right now. And then I don't remember what the first name was. I think the first name ever came up was Pizzazz. I was watching Impractical Jokers, and they painted the fucking guy's lawn pink. And they said, we add a little Pizzazz to your lawn. I said, what a great name. It's a fucking Pizzazz. I called the designer to put a bag in piz um, Pizzazz. Terps and Caicos, I was sitting on, I remember Terps and Caicos like it was yesterday afternoon. I was smoking a blunt of guava gas Nemo on the couch. I think it was a commercial on. 
that the commercial was probably for Turks and Caicos. I said, Turks and Caicos, Turks and Caicos, just like that out loud, Turks and, Ca Turks and Caicos. It came into me immediately once I heard the commercial. And I thought it was honestly, I remember just laughing out loud. That's fucking one of the best names ever. It was such a great name. I just, you know, had a good word play, some good pun to it. I was like, that's going to be a great name. Luckily, you know, the designer I used to work with back then, they nailed the bag. You know, and they did. They had dope. To, you know, it wasn't holographic back then, but the pink, the colors really shouted out, you know, because it stood out rather. You know, I have a thing. So in Boston back then, pop ups were huge. You go, they're still huge, obviously, in the Northeast and even out here. So as a person who used to attend pop ups all the time and I had a good table there and people would come, I always said like this okay, when I make a bag, right, I'm going to make this design as if it's going to be on a table at a pop-up. So if I'm at a table at a pop-up, the vendor's going to have whatever, fucking 15 selections. It doesn't matter. I'm not looking at all 15. I can't be here for 20 minutes. It's 10 people in line. The vendor's not going to allow that. How do I make my bag one of the first three picked off the table, if not one of the first two picked off the table? You know, because that's how competitive it is. Like, here's the fact of the matter. I've said this in a post on Instagram before. New York City is the biggest market, right? It is so fucking ultra-competitive in that city. If you're not one of the top three to five candy brands, you're not making the cut on their menus most time. Like they, like the ad, so most vendors back there, they can't carry just one brand. It's not how it works. Like I can't just carry bees. I can't carry so and so because their clients want a nice you know menu of everybody. How but how much can they buy? You know the average vendor. You know you only have X amount of income or resources to to buy the pack. So it's like I gotta get. I'm gonna get four brands, two of each. Yo, if you were number five, you just didn't get bought. You could be the fifth fucking best brand in California. That's a pretty nice thing, right? Imagine being top five and not getting the cut and not making the cut on the menu. That happens to people every day. And you know what? I can't let that happen right now to me. So, but that this game is so competitive, and I, especially the candy game, because like we like they're not the same, you know, they might be the same genetics, but they're not the same phenos. So, like I said earlier, how do you separate yourself from the ultra competitive market? And Bro, it's it's tough out here. Like it's really tough to stay relevant. And like I said, I'll, I'll pump bags out, but I only have one bag. That technically, wasn't even my design. That was it. You know what I'm saying? You know, the Terps and Caicos was my idea. Me and Fumi and High Volume have a new drop in the shape of a fortune cookie. That one was my idea. But bro, Duck Sauce was it. You know, and it's like, yeah, bro, it's hard to stay competitive in this game. So you have to do it by separating yourself with bag work and. It, yeah, it can all be run, run to a lemon cherry, but they have to be the best, like we were saying earlier, you know? It's not just as easy as putting lemon cherry in a bag. You have to get the best cuts out there and just, like I said, and stay competitive because you can get left off a menu real quick. You, you're, um, I tell them, I remind myself, that, like I'm really present. I feel like I'm present in my own mind as far as like, I remind myself that this isn't guaranteed all the time. Like this is not this position. There's a nice little demand going right now for the brand. I'm grateful for it, but that shit could be taken away tomorrow. One bad mistake, you know, one bad mistake you get a pass on because I have, you know, I have some good recognition right now. Two, maybe three bad drops in a row, it's over just like that. You know what I mean? And I'm always aware of that, and it's always present in my mind. So I use that to push myself to not fuck up like that. And it's like you can't get complacent. You know, it's the worst thing you can do. Is think okay, yeah, I'm good right now. I'm fucking the brand is booming. I'm doing good. Yeah, you can do better. You can always do better. You know why, why can't you do better? Like there's a million vendors in New York. I'm not on their menu. How do I get that? You know, there's always more out there for everybody. That's for every brand. And, you know, and like I know, like New Yorkers, you know, they don't like when people from Cali out here. But you know, you have to do it though. It's like everybody should come together. Mm -hmm. it, it makes it easier. It's like, I don't consider myself going to New York and stay on ground because I'm a fucking East Coast of born and raised. But it's like, at the end of the day, it's like everybody should just be working together and make it come together. It, it's a lot easier to, to have the Cali and the New York market come together and figure out, at the end of the day, like you, these big Cali brands have the right cultivators or they have the right cuts. You have to get it to the New York growers so they can grow it in New York, you know what I'm saying? But to say like, hey, yo, we don't want to come in, that's not the point, bro. It's like, it's small. My, I used to be that way. Like I used to say, oh, I don't want to work with them. But no, you can't do that. Like as the, the East Coast, or the East Coast mindset is every, as us versus everybody. I know. That's the East Coast, us versus everybody. If you ain't with us, you're against us. It's the East Coast mindset. Cool. But at some point, bro, you have to take a step back and be like, 
It's not really the lane for that right now. I ha you're better united than separated, you know? One of my favorite quotes is, your network is your net worth. You know, you, it's who you know, it's not what you know. I, you have to expand and you just have to come together and work because like, I, so my partner who's here in the room, he, he was always in Boston. He just moved out here three months ago permanently. And um, I was out here alone, but we always had that partnership across the country, you know, like by Costa. But let me tell you, since he's come out here, the fucking life is so easy now. Like we work our balls up, but to finally have somebody who can help, you have to get help. I thought I was crushing it. By myself, I was doing good by myself. But now that you have, I have a little help, forget about it. Imagine if I had another one with us instead of just two of us, because it's a two man crew basically out here. You know, I have my homie in Texas, you know, in Austin, who's killer for me. He's amazing. I have my homie in New Jersey, who's amazing for me. But in LA, in the base, like, you know what I'm saying? It's fucking, it's just us two. And I have my Dallas guys, but it's us two out here. And now that we finally have help, it makes it easier. And people don't like that. They like the East Coast mindset. They want to, like, I don't want to work with him. He's from the same neighborhood. Oh, guys, you can't do that. Like, you have to come together to, to just take over what you want to be. And, and another thing, like, I, I would tell anybody, if people ask me, you know, bees, if you had to give me one advice, what would you do? I tell them, leave your fucking neighborhood. Wherever you're from, leave. Move to California tomorrow. It's like, I, I made this decision a long time ago. This is the life I'm going to make, just like you guys have. So where do you want to be? Where do you have to be? This is the base of it, right? You have to move here. You can only get, there's very few people that can get as big as Fumi or whatever in New York, you know? But his resources are out here too. It's like, if you're going to be, you can't, you can only be so big. It's like, I like to tell people, it's like a goldfish. You put a goldfish in a tank, he's this big. You throw a goldfish in a lake, he's this big. You have to expand. Like in Boston, I thought I was awesome. I thought I had the best team. There's nothing compared to the, my network now. My network now is just a bunch of like, just a bunch of beasts at the end of the day. And, and it's like, you think where you're from in the local area is like the center of the universe. We all do, you know, and, but you can max out there quick too. You know, you got to get to a, a bigger arena, a bigger room, a different room. You know, you can't be the smartest guy in the room. You know, you got to find a new room. Like I hang around with people, people tell me, oh, come up to me like, oh, you're doing it great. Yeah. But you should see the people I'm hanging out with. They're fucking doing way better than me. You know what I'm saying? And that's who I learned from. That's the key. You know, like, that's why I keep saying his name, but that's why I love going to Ryan's office and talking to him. Like, before I came on here, he gave me advice. Like, you have to be with people better than that. You know, Gulf Coast always gives me advice. And you just have to be with people that are teaching you what you don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have a, I have a few people I can call for different types of advice, you know, like, some people run a brand, so I can call you for brand advice. Some people don't run a brand, but I can call you for different type of advice. And I'm really grateful for my network that I built and know that they have allowed me to come into their network because, you know, they don't have to let me in. Like I was saying about Gulf Coast early, he fucking didn't have to get it. People in his DM would probably beg to see him. But, you know, here it is. It's like, what are you going to do? It's like, he blessed me. I can't wait. Mace the opportunity. It's like the network is what it is. And you have to build a network from outside your base. And it goes back to just getting uncomfortable. How do you find someone good like the guy you got now? How do you find someone like that? How do you test them to know that he's worth putting your time and building with? See, I'm a big believer that relationships go both ways. If it's a one-way relationship, then it's not a real relationship. I got to give and take. I got to give and take. I play my role that he needs me to play or anybody's. But the, it's like anybody's role that you're in in life, you have to... You have to just play your role. It can't. It has to be give, give, give. It can't be. You know, everybody got to give to the to the party. Like one day, I have to give you advice. You got to give me. You have to do for me. I got to do for you, because otherwise, that's when resentment and the, these people come in, and, and it's like it just is what it is. It's like you have to do it. it you know, it really is. Man, something I got to say. Big, big, big shout out to Smoke Up, man. Yes. Uh, yeah. If you guys Family. haven't seen the New York City episode, when we went to New York, go on the first Smoke of the Day page and check it out because we he literally picks us up at 6.30, 7 a.m., drives yeah. us around the city. We mob around. We go to all the food spots. The dude is a G. Out of anyone, who, he literally was like, no, I'll pick you up, G, and I got smoke ready, and uh, you don't even need any flavors. We got flavor. I'll show you some real flavor. You know, like just yep. like you said, man, what a G that dude is, and yeah. we got to give a huge shout out because I think a lot of people skipped over that episode. What a dope episode. New York is a beast, and that dude's a beast, and I can see how you would look at someone like that and just be inspired. It's a small like, world because I ended up meeting him 
probably within the first month I moved out here, maybe the first two weeks I moved out here, maybe mm-hmm. even less than that. I was, you know, talking to him, chopping it up at a spot. Like, it's a small world. It, it, you come, like, you know, from outside looking in, you think LA is this big place, but bro, every all, good people are trying to look for other good people. You know what I'm saying? We're always in search for each other. Like, so eventually you weed out the bad people and the good people just know each other and they get into that circle. It, it's a very tight knit community, you know, and, you know, you have to stay, keep, you know, stay in a good face and keep your name good because you can get out of here really quick. And that's what I think people don't understand too. You know, you got to do good business. You got to keep people happy and just play your role. And that's a big important in the game. Politics are a big part of this game. You know, show support where the support's meant to be shown. It's fucking easy to support somebody. It's so much more difficult than hating. It's so much easier to support. Like t- hating on someone takes up real time. Like, just support somebody, bro. It's so much easier to hit repost and type out something hating, you know? Yeah. And that's just how it is. I, I think the game will be better when people unite and come, you know, and really work. Like, stop hating on the candy brands. And just, bro, just realize it's a different lane than you're in. And that's cool. That's okay, mm-hmm. you know? There's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's just a different lane, you know? Or grow candy <laughs> and make it real easy. <laughs> but it's just a different lane, man. And it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Shit. Any last words, man? Shout outs? Um, I don't want to forget anybody. Yeah. You know, I'm going to say, yeah, I mean, I feel like I talked about everybody in the podcast. I don't want to get too specific. Shout out my fiance and my baby. The house with that one. Shout out my fiance, my baby, my mom, my dad, my sister, my nephew, my son. But yeah. What about some advice? Absolutely. Some advice to some guys coming up younger than you. Just a couple pieces of advice that you would pass on to them um, if they want to start a brand. Or anything, you know get what I'm saying? Get candy, get fancy bags, and two plus two equals four. That's some advice. <laughs> How about Let's that, go. Man? You Thanks. already know, Straight man. Up, this man. was a pleasure, bro. You. It was awesome like listening that, to your story. Yo, be easy buds out of Boston, episode 59. You already know, it's first Thank smoke of the guys. day. Damn, this place is huge. I got to get what I need and get out of here, man. I'm in a rush. What? Whoa, Blackleaf? Oh, you already know. What are you doing here? I basically live here. Grow Generation, can filters, Power SI, Athena products, Lux Lighting. Man, I mean, I basically live here. Grow Generation Store is the largest hydroponic store I've ever been to. It's crazy. The largest hydroponic retailer in the nation with over 60 locations, so you know they got one near you. It's growgeneration.com and at growgeneration on Instagram. Tell them first smoke of the day sent you. Yo, what type of silica do you use in your garden? We rock Power SI the original all day long. Take a look at this though. We got the bloom. This right here, this is a game changer for any garden. If you want bioavailable silica, Power SI, first smoke of the day. Yo, welcome to the Diamond Mine. The diamondmine.la, California source for boutique genetics. Powered by yours truly, Blackleaf. And you know what that means? That means I'm bringing my best genetics into this. I'm bringing stuff I've been hiding, harboring away, stuff I haven't wanted to let out. We're bringing all that into the diamondmine.la and we're gonna offer that to California. Go on our website, hit the newsletter, and see if you can rock with us. Get on board with some of our genetics and change your garden. The diamondmine.la, powered by Blackleaf.